the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. <laughs> Rata Pacasa, Braga de Balada Bacata, Braga de Balada Bacosa, Prataca de Balada Bosch, Mam Bracata Papara de Balada Bassa, Rata Parada Balada Bassa, Braga de Balada Bassa, Pratacata, Ranta Pratacata Balada Bacasa, Braga de Balada Bossa, Braga de Balada Bosch, Train the Holy Ghost, Train the Holy Ghost, Rapa Cata Balada Baca, Braga de Balada Bosch. Mam prata kapa shata praga de balada bas, rakata preska bere de balada bas, prakata balada bas, manta paka proska paria de balada bas. We are becoming the victorious ones. Mam prosa parata paka preta de balada bas, rakata proska parike te, lam prata kata preke de balada bas, kosa praga de balada bas, kata preke de balada bas, rakata balada da 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 da. Deyama sadaria na baka praga na balada bas. Deyama suparia na 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 na. Deyama kaparia na 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 na. Baka prata shaka ta balada ba. Rapa kapro seka te ke te balada bas. Make sure you are praying in tongues. This is part of the meeting. Le pros kapara da baka prata ke te balada bas. Rapa kapro kapare ke te la kabosa. Rapa ta prake te balada bas kat. Le pros kapari ke te. Le cross carry batali baso proto shupa me kaporia kate la kaboza am prokata ba 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 le kata pa kapra kata balada ba rakata prekete kete bele 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 bako so prekete bele bele bosha ma kata pra kapa kata le koto so pa kate le kopros kaporia kete le pra kapa ba ba kata balada balada ba rapa kapros kapari kete. Lem prekete karia kata ba 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 me kapora kasi kete lekosa rampate kapros karia ba rampate kati alaba he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself me kapros kapare kete but ye building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost le kapare kete barada ba la ba kata prekete ba la ba. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all gathered in one accord. Suddenly, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it came and filled the room. And they saw what appeared like cloven tongues as of fire, and it fell on each one of them. And they began to speak in tongues. They began to speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Maka freska pakata. Rapakata prekete, for with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me, and this is that which I prophesy: the rest and the refreshing. Le prakata palada baka parike posa, and it shall come to pass in the latter days. I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And upon my maid servants will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and signs upon the earth, blood and fire and smoke. Baka prate kaparia, we are that generation, O God, and we contend for prophecy. We are that generation that will lift up the banner of power and faith and righteousness and glory. The Bible says there remains a rest for the people of God. We labor in the place of prayer until we apprehend that which Christ was apprehended for. 
Come on, warriors, pray. Rapata shataka yabakata la bosa. Rapa proske prege de belede rosa. Man prata kapa kapa kete belede bosa. Rakata prege de kete prege de balaba. Rakata prake de balaba. Rapata proska pare kete. Le proska pare ya baba Outside, make sure you are praying. Reka pare ya baba baba baba. Maka prasa tabai. You're making your spirit man strong. You're generating power in the inner man. Paul prayed that we be strengthened in the inner man. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Make sure you're praying. Your flesh may be weak, but your spirit is winning. Rakata prakata prakete kete. Rapaka proska pariyaraba. Mam proka parikete. Le proska preska rabadabadaba. Mem proska prakete belede bosh. Rekete prakete belaraba. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man what God has in store for they that love him, but he has revealed it to us by the Holy Ghost. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Make sure you are still holding someone's hand, pray in the Spirit, it's the power of unity. And he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the building up of the saints, that the saints may do the work of the ministry, that everyone may grow into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ, not being tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It will make you powerful. It will make you anointed. You will be full of the Holy Ghost. You will be full of discernment. You will be full of authority. It will activate your spirit in the spirit. It will shake out religion from your life. It will shake out the traditions of men and bring you to a place of light and grace. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Your flesh may be weak, but it's a labor in the spirit. The Bible says, He that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth unto the spirit will of the spirit live, reap life eternal. We saw to the spirit tonight. Build your inner man. Build your spirit man. Build power in the spirit. Build your inner man. Rakata baka breke. Rekete kosopa. Reposko breke de belerebos. Rapata breke de. Be a man of power. Be a woman of authority. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Maka proske parikatai. I quicken your faith. Let your spirit be receptive to the word of God. We are ambassadors. Ambassadors. Men of fire. Men of power. Men of wisdom. Men of audacity. Men of faith. Men of courage. Men of stamina and structure. Men of dexterity in the spirit. There's no going back. There's no giving up. We are burning the bridge behind us, shattering every wall in front of us. Our generation will know that we name the name of Christ. Go ahead and pray. Your prophet will appear unto all, for there is no man who warreth who will entangle himself with the things of civilians. Come on, stretch a little more. Ratakata praskata pakata, rakata prekate, lekaposka prekata, mam prekete kosata, 
Rakata prekete gele bere bosa. Stretch a little more. Make a prekete kete bele de bokosa. Enlarge your capacity. Rakata pres kapata kapa. Renta pros kapari keta. Rakata prekete gele bosa. Mam prekete prekete bele de ba. For we know not what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself. Make it intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. Rakata pakata, rapakata prekete, raposta prosa pariata, mam prokoso prekete benedebosa. Shata kata palada bakata prekete benedeba, rapakata prakata palada baha. You're becoming a man of fire, I'm telling you. You're becoming a woman of power. You may look ordinary. But watch what the Holy Ghost can do in your life. You may look weak and beggarly, but watch what the Holy Ghost will make out of you. You may look small. It's not about your age. It's not about your qualification. It's not about your status. It's not about your geographical location. The power of the Holy Ghost, Rabata Krasteketeya, strengthening your inner man. You are employing the agency of the Spirit, it's making you alive to the things of the Spirit. Manta pakata krakata be, shakata kapaka prakata balada ba, saprata kata prakata he. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Make sure you participate in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will be strong. There is a reward for this. There is a reward for this. You are not wasting your time. There is a reward for this. There is a reward for this. God is no man's debtor. There is a reward for this. Ma pa kata le kapa, rapos kaprende kele kosia. It may not be convenient, but it's the path to power, the path to grace. Refuse to give up. Refuse to let the the fatigue in your body affect you. Rise above the limitations of the flesh. Rise above the constraints of your body. Take up wings like the eagles. Take up wings like the eagles. Leave the realm of the natural man. The Bible says there are different kinds of bodies. Some are celestial. Some are terrestrial. Take up the body of the one and only God. The powerful one said if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit that same anointing that same quickening that same power like the dry bones of Ezekiel 37 you make you become an exceeding great army don't be tired, just a little more. Don't be tired. Rapa kata praga da bala da bash. De eka bari ya da 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 da. De na na masi ya da 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 da. De eka bari ya da 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 da. Maka proska para kata bala da da. Ashata bakata. Saints pray. Beloved, build yourselves on your most holy faith. You will be full of the Holy Ghost. You will be full of the anointing. I'm telling you, you will be full of the presence of God. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. And Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. His face began to glow and they thought he was an angel. Pray in tongues. Shake sickness from your body. Shake oppression from your life. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shaka Prasika Tabaladaba. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you're becoming men and women of power. You may not realize what the Holy Ghost is doing in you. Many of you do not know what is happening to you. There is a mingling. There is a oneness. Koinonia. There is, there is a harmony. There is a partnership. This is what we call koinonia. Intimacy through partnership. Your partnership with the Holy Ghost. You're subjecting your members to the influence of the Spirit. And then you will begin to assume the character of the Spirit. You will begin to demonstrate the reality of His presence. I'm telling you, this is what is happening to you. You may look ordinary, but you are becoming powerful in the Spirit. Demons cannot stand this. You're developing authentic faith. Faith that will stand the test of time. Faith that will last. You will need this in the days to come. Believe me, you will need this when men who are building upon sand are falling by the wayside. Like Jesus, you will walk upon water because you have you have choked yourself with the word forget about your neighbor whether he believes in what you're doing or not you just focus on your destiny you may be sweating it may not make sense but the bible says he uses the foolish thing to confound the wise Lord we choose to be foolish in the spirit pray sister you will need it in your home as a wife you will need it as a mother you will need it on your job you will need it in your ministry you are being trained and equipped. It may cost you now, but I assure you, it will be worth it when God will present you as a spectacle, a showpiece to the world. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you're looking for convenience, listen, if you are looking for convenience, Koinonia is not the place for you. Are you listening to me? If you're looking for convenience, you want to come and have a dignified, nice service, this is not the place for you. This is the place for as many who realize that God is raising and training an army. Men and women who love their future more than their today. And are willing to pay the price no matter what it will cost you. This is not the place for lazy people. This is not the place for people who just want to laugh and feel good. You must mean business with your destiny because there is an adversary called the devil and he will not stop. He's determined to make sure he wrecks your life. The Bible says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. And until you train your spirit 
and you sharpen yourself the bible says it will be difficult falling down the tree because the head of the axe is dull but when there is a sharpening in the spirit you will walk in victory this is your price you are paying now lamentations 327 it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now he said it is good that a man bears his yoke carry the burden now cry now sweat now look ugly while praying now because the day will come when he will lift you up and he will make a spectacle out of your life bible says there were 10 virgins all of them were virgins but five were foolish and five were wise the foolish ones were not foolish because they followed men they were foolish because they did not take extra oil the bible says all of them took oil but some said kai we don't know how long this will last let's take extra oil this is what you are doing the bible says they waited and all the other people lost their oil and then they had an alarm that the husbandman was coming and the remaining five the foolish ones didn't have extra oil and they missed out you're taking your extra oil now you're filling the vessels your finances your life your health your ministry hallelujah hallelujah i'd like you to lift your hands and pray unto the lord and say holy spirit i want you to feel me my spirit my soul and my body i want to be so under the influence of the spirit Jesus did not give us a religion to be full of the Holy Ghost my bones every fiber of my cell my blood every part of my body full of the Holy Ghost the spirit of the living God that I become an expression of his person pray say Lord teach me your ways teach me your ways hallelujah hallelujah please put down your hands I have one guarantee one that this sacrifice that you're subjecting yourself to will reward you above and beyond what you are doing now I assure you listen listen what you are doing has monetary value what you are doing has health value what you are doing has honor value you are doing this so that you will not chase after other things. Believe me. Listen. When, when a man gets up and buys a brand new Jeep, Pastor, and comes to give a man of God, that is somebody's prayer and fasting for one year yet somebody gets it as a reward for concentrating on the things of the spirit when they are telling other people no and it's a privilege for them to serve you it's because of a presence you are carrying the price you are paying now is more than what your education can give you believe me oh yes is more than what any business acumen on earth can give you it's more than what any drug can give you staying in the presence when you dwell in the presence you carry the favor of God you carry the light of God you carry the power of God you carry the wisdom of the spirit 
I'm telling you, you will look as if you are half man and half something else. This is what happened to Paul. They said the gods have come down to us. What will make a man behave as if he's half man and half something else? But that's not a lie because that's what you really are. Partnership. The natural you plus the super God makes you supernatural. This is the price you're paying today so that you will not receive needless and useless no in your future. No for everything. You're paying the price now. Many of you are paying the price for a reward that no level of job interview will give you. You may not know. You may not know. In the house of Cornelius, the Bible tells us that when the angel appeared unto Cornelius, he said, your prayers and your arms, in other words, your kingdom investments and your sacrifices have been noted every time. Can I tell you something? The demons that are supposed to oppress your future, they are witnessing you as you are paying this price. They already know it's over for them. They are watching. The Bible says we are surrounded by many people. See, listen. This is what makes some people command power in public. When you, are, when you are doing what is sin and evil, God is watching you, Satan is watching you, demons are watching you, everybody is watching you. So when you come out, there's no pretense. But if you are generating power, God is watching, Satan is watching, God is saying, see now, you are seeing the legal claims of justice, you are watching it. You are watching. See, no man will truly serve God and re receive the reward of evil men. God is not like that. You are sending vapor to your cloud. And the Bible says, when the cloud be full of rain, it will empty themselves. I made up my mind that whatever it will cost me, I will pay that price till I attain unto that level that I see in the spirit. Many of us feel very complacent. Many of us feel we are okay. Refuse it. There is a greater level in the spirit. This is not about ministry. I hope you know. This is not about man of God. You will then find out in the future that you will never have to build one house by yourself. Everybody is blessing you. What is all this? You just tell someone, God bless you. Even by mistake, a door opens. You think he will leave you? What power? You are sleeping. Someone comes to sleep on your bed. He gets blessed. He puts his file. He's looking for job. His file touches you and he gets the work. See, handkerchiefs and aprons. That's what the Bible says. See, listen. Don't you think I'm just motivating you? This is what happens when you become full of the Holy Ghost. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is supposed to create the Garden of Eden anywhere it goes to. This is what is called the blessing. People have preached garbages and called it. The blessing is not a thing. The blessing is the presence of a personality. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangs upon that the blessing of Abraham, hold on. The blessing of Abraham is not prosperity. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. The Bible says, we like faithful Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. And so like Abraham, if we receive his blessing, the faith to believe God, then it ushers us to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. This is what the Bible calls in Psalms 133, the blessing. The blessing is not just prophetic pronunciation. The blessing is the presence of a personality, the Holy Spirit. So that whether it's through your words, whether it's through your actions, you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are full of the life of God. Someone comes to you and say, look, this door is not opening. And you say, let us pray such as I have. I have something better than money better than political positions 
and then a day will come you will speak over nations this is what is happening to you if you don't believe these things then there's no point coming because this is what we are training you to become hallelujah where you will give birth to your children and they'll be full of the holy ghost from the womb the bible says and john was full of the holy ghost people say this child came out with all kinds of demons useless things the child comes out with teeth in his mouth this is not the kind of heritage god is giving us why not come out with a prophecy i don't know about you but i plan to be an awesome wonder upon the earth i want god to use my life to demonstrate to principalities and powers that he was not joking on that cross and this is not ministry this is the kingdom life you're welcome god bless you hug three people and sit down thank you jesus hallelujah thank you so much for coming it's always it's always a pleasure to teach the word and build ourselves in the things of the kingdom and i thank god for an opportunity to do this again it's always an awesome opportunity hallelujah take the word of god that you're receiving now very seriously because the Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of God was scarce hallelujah so the word of God can be scarce but now that you have it take it hallelujah praise the Lord I want to ask a question And I want someone to attempt it. You can feel free. Don't feel embarrassed. This is a school. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be born again? What do you understand? Anybody? Feel free. Make your mistakes. Yes, sir. No mic. No problem. If there's no mic, let him just... Let's listen to our brother. Yes, sir. Self as a living sacrifice. To offer yourself a, as a living sacrifice. To God. All right. God bless you. Any other? Yes. There's a brother down there. Uh -huh, you. Uh -huh. To what? I'm, I'm not, I didn't hear him. To be immersed in the Holy Ghost. All right. This side. Feel free, this is a school. Talk to me, my dear. To be born again means? To be born again, according to my understanding, means being saved by the salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross and living by the principles of the kingdom. All right, God bless you. Yes, my brother. Please. You've used that word for yourself. So what did you do? That your human spirit is recreated through faith and confession. Okay, God bless you. Let's take two more people. Let's take someone from outside. Run with the mic, someone. Two people. Let's take two people from outside. We are following those outside. So, someone tell us. Lord, to be transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. All right. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. One more person. Hallelujah. Is to be made that of Christ. To what? To be made of Christ. Okay. A good follower of Christ. One lady must speak. Sisters. One sister outside. To have a new nature. To have a new nature. Above the other. That is above... Okay. God bless you. I appreciate all these people. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
when you become born again and you come into the kingdom of God listen for you to be equipped it's important for you to understand certain things about the kingdom hallelujah many believers do not have proper knowledge about many spiritual terminologies and this has affected our relationship with God hallelujah one of it interestingly is this concept of born again hallelujah there are many Christians who don't know what it means to be born again they were not taught hallelujah they just preached a message on marriage and say in case you've not given your heart to the Lord come out here and the person just came out from what into what he doesn't even know he just came and stood and while they were praying he was pinching his friend or his brother and sister and they just said amen they said clap for them follow these people and so many believers come into the faith without really knowing what imagine a student for instance who comes into the university and you ask him what is a university and honestly some of you may not be able to answer it and you're in final year what is a university no no i won't ask you to answer but you are just realizing that i really don't know what it is what is a university what is the difference between a university and nursery school the chairs or your uniform so many christians don't know the difference between what they were and what they are now you see that because I'm very concerned. There are many people who are not born again. And that means they are going to hellfire. But they are in church. Please listen to me carefully. They are in church. Some have Christian names. Are you listening to me? But they are not born again. Because we were not taught when great men like D.L. Moody and Charles G. Finney and this great revivalist taught the concept of being born again, they taught it properly. And those who got born again really got born again. Hallelujah. But over time, the thing has been watered down. How many notable evangelists do we have in the world? Notable. Reinhard Bonke, Peter Youngry. Who? Benny Hinn. Who else? Tell Osborne is late. Sorry? Well, Billy Graham has practically retired. He's just waiting for the day. Who else? Look at Christians. We don't even know the things that are happening around our world. Todd Bentley. Who? Who? Steve Hill. Who else? Eh? You, yes, your Imao Kwai is in Nigeria. What do you think I was talking about? You don't have evangelists in this country. Are you playing? How did your parents get sick? <laughs> Hallelujah. I promise to be your friend this night. So let's just continue. By the way, how was last week? It was what? Many of you were happy that I was not around. Then you saw me again. Thank God for the media. Hallelujah. While I was in Niger State, I was wondering. In my mind, I was saying, by now they are listening. I was just imagining the way the word would be flogging out everything that was not of God. You will like me in the future. You may not like me now. Believe me. Thank you, Jesus. So what does it mean to be born again? Because the Bible has something to tell us about being born again. And if as Christians, we do not know what it means to be born again and the realities of the kingdom, then it means something is critically wrong. Because all of us at one point or the other are involved in some kind of evangelistic activities is that correct hallelujah whether through tracts some of us don't believe in tracts you say it's old school 
you go and find out the demonic books that initiate people into occult just by reading a pamphlet tracks are as powerful as ever you are the one who has backslided not the tracks they still have the power of the holy spirit and if you believe in them they can save sinners hallelujah let's see what jesus said john chapter 3 i want to touch on some issues tonight that have been hot in my spirit we look to yahweh yahweh John 3. This was a conversation between Jesus Christ and Nicodemus. Oh, let me ask a second question before we continue. Please look up. To be saved and to be born again, are they the same or different according to your understanding? Yes, my brother. What do you think? Are they the same or are they different? Feel free, don't try to be right. All right, God bless you. That's his opinion. Who else? To be saved, to be born again. Yeah, the same. God bless you, sir. One more person. Yes, my dear. Yeah, the same. God bless you, sweetheart. All right. Let's find out. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again. So Jesus used the word himself. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now Nicodemus was, he was really worried. And he said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? and be born look up so nicodemus is giving us his idea the mental picture he got from what jesus said correct so from what nicodemus is saying he understood what jesus meant to be that you enter into your mother's womb and come out again correct let's read on verse 5 jesus now answered he's now expounding remember he's responding to the question that nicodemus asked him so this is the born again issue now being expounded verse 5 verily verily i say unto you so now he re, he replaces the word born again with something else except a man be born of what and of the he cannot and this is the reason six that which is born of flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again look up please i'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb your spirit just follow me hallelujah because number one i don't want you to go to hell number two i want you to be powerful and to be effective the Bible says, let's start from the scripture people use for being born again. Romans 10. Let's start from verse 8. Please make sure you are following tonight. I just want to touch on issues and we'll pray. Born again is not the only thing. I have three things to share. I don't know what tonight's topic is. I honestly don't know okay okay romans 10 i thought it will be projected romans 10 from verse 8 to 10 all right so what exactly was moses saying the word that saves is right here as near as the tongue in your mouth is this amplified please give us amplified This is not wrong. We just want to use Amplified. 
But what does it say? The word, God's message in Christ is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis and object of faith which we preach. Verse 9. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe, adhere to and trust in and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Verse 10. This is the general principle. For with the heart a person believes, adheres to trust in and relies on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth he confesses, declares openly and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. Praise the Lord. Look up, please. I want you to know that to be saved and to be born again, are not the same. The first question again, I'm going to ask you questions tonight. What are you saved from? Someone help us again. To be saved means you are rescued, redeemed from something, correct? What is a Christian saved from? Honestly, you are growing. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. There's one sister down there. Yes, quickly, sir. Death. Was saved from death. death. Yeah. You mean, can you explain like what kind of death? See, this, this interactive session will make you a good student, not a student of the Bible, a student of the kingdom. Yes, sir. During the time of Adam and Eve, after a man sinned, they died like spiritually. Okay. There was no reunion with God. Okay. So we are saved from death. Okay, from that death. God bless you. Thank you so much. That sister down there and then there's a sister down there. Praise God. You are saved from yourself. All right. God bless you, sister. She said you are saved from yourself. Okay, one more person. Let's just have that brother there. Yes, sir. You are saved from sin. From Satan and from death. God bless you. All right, it's okay. <laughs> let's let's hurry up. Now, first and foremost, let's understand what happened in the beginning. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God said Genesis one twenty six and Elohim said, "Let us make man in our own image, and after his likeness, you know, and so on and so forth." And He made man. Correct. The Bible says in Genesis 2, it says that God breathed into that breath, that dust, Adam. Correct? And he became a breath of life. Is that correct? Now, was that initial man born again? Was he saved? What happened to him? Hallelujah. He couldn't have been saved, isn't it? Because he didn't do anything. Is that correct? What of born again? The word again, he had never existed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please follow me. Don't be confused. You must follow me this night. You came for koinonia. The Bible tells us something interesting. It calls Jesus the firstborn. Is that correct? When Jesus rose again, he calls him the firstborn among many brethren while jesus walked upon the earth he was called the only begotten son but when he died he didn't become the only begotten again he became what the firstborn firstborn to do what why was he called firstborn because he was the one who adumbrated and gave us a picture of what we call the new creation and what he should now become are you listening to me but before he became the firstborn, what happened? Listen. The Bible says he became sin. Hallelujah. His entire person was sin. Correct? And he died. When he died, he went to the grave. Hallelujah. His position in the grave was the prophetic picture of everyone's current state before God. Hallelujah. And on the third day, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came. And made Jesus the firstborn. Hmm. 
Do you read your Bibles? The Holy Spirit came and brought him back to life. Is that correct? Now, but listen, 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 because this is very important. When Jesus resurrected, notice this. When Mary or Martha, who now came to touch him, which of them? Who? Some of you wanted to say the mother of Jesus, you just close your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when she came to touch him, what happened? He said, although I've resurrected, don't touch me. It's not complete yet. Are, are you following me now? He said, don't touch me. You will ruin the work because I'm about to go to heaven and do something that will complete it. At that point, anybody can touch me. Is it not in your Bible? And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that he went to the heavenly tabernacle. He became the priest, the high priest, and he became the lamb. But he had raised up from the dead. Is that correct? Please don't be confused. Just follow me. And the Bible says he, you know he didn't do that in hell? Are you listening to me? And then the Bible says he, he poured his blood upon that heavenly tabernacle. After that, a coronation service was held in heaven immediately. Many of you think the coronation service happened in Acts 1. No. Right away, immediately in heaven. He was coronated king of kings and lord of lords. Then he appeared before them and said, All hail, all power, all authority in heaven was given to me when this is what the psalmist saw the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool so many things were happening between heaven and earth concurrently the second thing i want you to know is that jesus did not raise rise up from the dead after three days he was on the third day the bible does not tell us after three days jesus said on the third day correct so that gospel of after three days is not, is, not, is not in the Bible. Jesus did not resurrect after in that sense that the third day now finished. That means he was on the fourth day. Uh -uh. He was on the third day. Are you learning something? So Jesus resurrected from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen. Jesus was born by the spirit he was born again by the spirit he was glorified by the spirit the bible says he was born in the womb of his mother by the power of the holy spirit is that correct so he was born no again there he was born <laughs> correct when he rose up by the power of the holy spirit he was now what but then he told us that that was not all there was to that phase of born again. He needed to ascend. And then when he came back, he said, now you can touch me. Put your fingers in my thigh and everything. And the Bible says he now left bodily and this same Jesus is returning. If you do not understand what I'm teaching you, it will be difficult for you to understand any truth in the faith. Because many people have not produced the fruit of what the bible says should characterize the life of a born again believer now listen to me i want to shock you right now when you are saved please listen you are saved how do i put this now The blood of Jesus is what saves you. The incorruptible seed of God's word does not save. It brings you into the experiential workings of the kingdom. The Bible says we're born not by, it didn't mention blood there. If these things are in your Bible now. I will show you the place. Hallelujah. Where then is the role of the blood of Jesus and the role of the word of God? 
listen when you understand the jewish customs none of them could be born again but they could be saved are you listening to me they could be saved by atonement atonement the word atone means to cover are you listening to me and so they would sacrifice a lamb and use the blood and pour it upon the mercy seat and then when god looked down he would see the blood and it would be an adumbration of what jesus was coming to do and then it will pacify him so it saved them but for a period of time are you listening to me but now jesus's plan was not just to save us alone if his plan was to save us alone then he did not need to die because before his death blood was already coming out of his body are you following me now are you listening to me so the goal was not to atone for our sins atonement for our sins was necessary for us to receive the life of god you get my point let me use two people my brother no don't worry pastor please come sweetheart come you and this brother come let me try and use an analogy that please stand here sir my dear you stand here let me have someone again you are wearing white so come and be jesus watch this the bible says adam was created in the image and the likeness of god isn't it he had the righteousness of god now he lost the righteousness of god he lost everything the holy spirit the entire life of god so he was dead that's what we call spiritual death are you listening to me and now this lady for instance wants to get to this brother but it so happens that before she gets to this brother she must meet this guy are you listening to me is this guy once look at me you are jesus now once this guy does not see this person escorting her he's not going to attend to her are you following me now so for you to be able to stand in the presence of jesus the blood must atone for you are you listening to me it is when you stand in the presence of jesus you are now qualified to receive his life to receive the holy spirit the holy spirit cannot come upon you if you have not been saved are you listening to me it is the holy spirit that initiates you into the born again experience but he cannot find expression until you are saved so the blood of jesus makes you blameless before the throne are you listening to me so you stand with the same righteousness as jesus christ faultless before the throne his righteousness and his blood has covered for you now on that ground the father looks at you and says i cannot see a sinner all i see is a replica of jesus christ and to prove to you that you have been saved he gives you his spirit that begins your journey of born again are you listening to me believers god bless you i just wanted to demonstrate this please do you understand this you have to understand it this night in jesus name do you understand this so far so the first thing that happens is the blood the blood makes way are you listening to me so the blood of jesus does not do everything as it were in the equation of salvation because the word of the lord will also be spoken he will declare you not guilty the bible says ah, is in your bible unto him jude 24 who is able to keep you from falling and present you so jesus presents you faultless is that correct i just want to save time i would have shown you all this scripture until jesus presents you faultless this is what the high priest did so he presents you as having his own righteousness and on that ground the spirit of god the spirit of glory the spirit of adoption comes upon you 
and now you can cry abba father in other words jesus has become the firstborn that's why people sing songs and say god is my father jesus is my brother you get the sense of saying he's my brother <laughs> christians it's amazing isn't it so that born again is where i have a problem with many christians because we have been taught that once you come on stage i know we use the word born again please understand this jesus said except you be born of water please give us john 3 5. let me explain to you what jesus was saying He said, except ye be born of water. Hold on. Ye be born of water. What is the function of water? Except a man be born of water. And that means after that experience of water, there is something that will still happen. The spirit. You cannot truly be said that you are born again. You have not entered into the experience of the kingdom life. There are so many believers that have been saved. The condition for being saved is that you call upon the name of the Lord. The condition for being born again is that you walk and allow the word to build you until the life of God is fashioned and framed in you. I know we generally interchange them and use born again. You get my point. But I want to explain to you the scriptural dynamics of what it means to be born again because when you understand this you will know that there are many Christians many people who are not born again if you truly are born again it is impossible for people around you not to recognize that you're born again because your being born again is a product of your work with the spirit and your work with the word the word is building you And there is an outworking that demonstrates to everybody around you that you are born again and I'm very concerned because you find out that what somebody was doing he gave his life to Christ is the same thing he's doing after he gives his life to Christ two years later he's still doing the same thing let me tell you he's not born again I know that many of you don't like what I'm preaching because this is the deceit that has been in the body of Christ. There are many believers who are jumping. Can I tell you something? The condition for you to go to heaven is not just that you come out and say, Oh Jesus, I love you. And then you say, at least my name is in the book of life. And this and that and that. Uh-uh. 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 Just like the condition to give your life to Satan. It's not just that you say, Satan, use me. But he must find you in active service demonstrating your willingness hallelujah is that correct it's disturbing me very seriously because there are many people who are going to go to hell from the church i'm saying this thing please listen to me this is the voice of the lord there are many people on their way to hell because they've been taught that all it takes is just three seconds away jesus i love you i repent be my lord amen and they say beautiful wonderful now you can go just live your life and the person say wow if it was this easy this is nice and he's doing everything that he knows and wants to do after 30 years you look at this person and you say are you a christian the person say yes how do you know you're a christian you see i remember on the 25th of 1979 i made that glorious decision let me tell you the truth there are many people who made these kinds of decisions but they're in hell today listen to me i want you to grow up i don't want you to be in deceit because the devil is smiling you don't know how satan hates what i'm about to teach you because there are many people who are on the highway to hell believe me When many of you read books and you hear about people who went to hell, many of you think it's a joke. Let me be honest with you, it's not a joke. 
Hallelujah. Someone is born again. After five years, after six years, there is no difference. You walk in sin, you walk in iniquity. The same, there is, have you seen Christians like that? The only thing is you know you saw them the day they were making that decision. But after four years, after five years, nothing has changed. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not working in that life. Listen to me. If you pour water in this bottle and you put it in a fridge, after one hour, what do you expect? There must be something that tells you this water has been taken from out of one atmosphere into another. You can't hide it. Are you listening to me? If after three hours you come and you find out that this water is not cold, what is wrong? Either the fridge is spoiled or the person just kept the water near the fridge but it did not enter. This is what is happening to many believers. Are you listening to me? So many Christians believe that the evidence, listen please, listen please. And I'll show you where the place of faith is because I know many of you say, ah, this is a thing of faith. This is what I want to balance. Because the devil has deceived many people. Just says, just by faith, don't worry. It is by faith for you to begin the journey, not to end and stop there. You believe by faith that you have confessed Jesus as Lord. And by faith, his spirit has come to live in you. What happens? Faith is a response to the reality of a word. And then you begin to walk with the word. I'm going to show you some things. Help us tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us. The Bible says, In that day, many shall say, We prophesy in your name. Is it in your Bible? Others will say, We healed in your name. What will he tell them? Depart from me. The healers, the prophets, depart from me. There needs to be a redefinition of authentic Christianity. I'm provoking many of you to get back to the word. Because all the things we know, many of us didn't study it. Somebody preached it. You believed it, you received it. And it has become your ideology. But let's search the word, brothers and sisters. Something is critically wrong with our Christianity. Because our Christianity does not seem to create any effect in the realm of the spirit in ancient times when people got born again you saw radical changes look at paul saul now are you listening to me what happened from that time onward there was no issue of one day he decided to say look are you not concerned please listen to me a man of god claims to be born again after many years he now tells you, after 30 years of walking with the Holy Spirit, he tells you, I've been suffering this since I was a boy. So, is it that the Holy Spirit could not walk and bring an effectual walking or something is wrong? Once again, I know I'm going to be criticized for this message. But I'd rather tell you the truth so that you will know you are standing in authentic Christianity. Hallelujah. 99% of believers ask them, what makes you think you are born again? They tell you the date. They bring a date. They say, on the 14th. And there are ministries, they even tell them, you must write, there's a place in the form, you write the date. And so you see someone you know is far from the kingdom. But you can, because you can present a date. Hallelujah. You present a date. Someone is in the beer parlor. You are preaching to him. He said, let me tell you. This born again thing you are talking. Let me tell you the truth. In, I remember in 1971. We went to preach in this. Look at the person who is telling you he's born again. Are you listening to me? You believe he's going to heaven. Let me tell you he's not going to heaven. But he's convinced. He has a form. That shows you he came out. And he's not living by the word. He's not doing anything. Go to TJ Palace. Today is Friday. I heard there's a name of one dangerous satanic place. What's the name of that place? One club in town. 
maize or mate or something maize mate hallelujah now you go and meet somebody there you will be surprised to go and find out that those people go to church on sunday hallelujah they go to church on sunday some of them even pray in tongues christians please listen to me tonight i'm bringing you a clarion call the bible says examine yourself and check if you are in the faith that means a man can be deceiving himself and not be of god paul talked of certain people he said they were never part of us in the first place they were never part of us are you listening to me If you come to Jesus Christ, you confess him as Lord and you receive soteria, salvation. That is only the beginning of what we call your born again experience. Are you listening to me? You are saved instantly. You are not born again instantly. Are you listening to me? Your salvation brings you as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is not on account of your works. It's on account of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Totally on account of his grace. And then after that, what happens? The spirit of God enables you to begin to show forth the fruits of salvation by your partnership and oneness with the spirit of God. Are you listening to me? When that happens, the life of God begins to flow not just from your spirit. It finds expression in your mind. It changes your mindset and your mentality. At that point, your value systems are re-edited. The things you used to have appetite and desire for begins to change. Then people around you begin to see that, uh -uh, this sister, we know her now. Was this not the lady that used to dance in TJ Palace? Hallelujah. She doesn't need to announce. There is something happening in her. Hallelujah. And then Pastor Alpha that you would have given him a slap and he will give you back. You give him back. And then he tells you as well. The Lord bless you. What is happening? Fruits of transformation. A demonstration of the authority of the kingdom. Gaining grounds in you. How did you know Jesus was the son of God? It wasn't just because he said it. He was doing something differently. There are many Christians whose lives are not different. And we are, we are deceiving ourselves from church to church. If you are a pastor here, listen to me. Go and stay with the word of God because God will judge you if you mislead God's people. Oh, this is the new, this is the new wine rising. I tell you the things that God is doing in the earth will re-edit Christianity as you will have known this is what happened to our fathers they had songs that they sang as evidences of their experiences hallelujah remember the good old songs people sing different songs he touched me he touched me they said something happened for many people nothing happens and the man of god said don't worry it's just a thing of faith after one year this guy is still alive and strong has no desire for God but the Bible says the seed of God is supposed to be in him hallelujah hmm. something is really wrong with our concept of salvation and born again because we have been told that the moment you give your heart to the Lord you are fit for heaven therefore relax do you know that god's ultimate idea is not to take you to heaven i hope you know the purpose of getting born again is not to go to heaven the purpose of getting born again is to conform to the fullness of the image and the statue of christ hallelujah you can lose your salvation but when you become born again there is no going back again because this is this is an is you can't undo it again it was you and the holy spirit this is the disciples could die for jesus because they were born again we have many people who claim they are saved 
and they are dying they are going to hell we have many people who believe they are born again they believe they are filled with the holy spirit yet there are idols in their house it's not like it's a struggle some of you are looking at me in your house is there is there and some of our fathers have it you go to church on sunday you do there are idols there are other rooms the man tells you i'm born again he even speaks in tongues Ba, 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 but there are idols there nothing is changing in him you are a liar the bible says if we confess that we if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness hallelujah so how do you walk in the kingdom you get saved by the revelation in Romans 10, 9 to 10. What does that mean? You receive of the grace of God and you stand faultless before the throne. The Holy Spirit comes in your life. Listen to me. The proof that you are walking with God is not necessarily that you are reading your Bible. I want to surprise you now. Look up. Hmm. Jesus. I won't teach this anywhere i trust the maturity god has brought us so far that's why i'm able to teach this do you know that there are some people in some nations of the world who will never have the opportunity to hold a bible is that correct so how do those people grow let me tell you the truth the evidence that the holy spirit is at work in your life is that your life begins to conform to the principles of the kingdom both principles you know or you don't know your life begins to conform into it one day you will read the bible and find out that before you found certain revelations you are already walking in the obedience that's a sign that the spirit of god is working in your life hallelujah look up do you know that the apostles did not know that what they were walking in was called the gift of the spirit maybe if it was john that wrote the book of acts he would have called it enablement of the most high so he would have said there are nine enablements of the most high the name did not matter. They all walked with the Holy Spirit and found themselves walking in the principles of the word. Now this was documented so that because of the perverseness that will come in our generation. So that we can compare the dealings of God and test spirits. So the Holy Spirit is the only one who can bring any man in conformity to the word of God and the principles of the kingdom. Are you listening to me eternity will take you to read and understand and know all the principles of the word of god but if you walk with the holy spirit you will find yourself walking in certain realities i've gone to places and villages that we have had the opportunity to preach and we prayed for people who could not speak english and later on we saw these people and we saw the fruits of the works of christ at work in them the women were prophesying they did not know that what they were doing is called prophecy they just knew that they were walking by the spirit they were becoming more like jesus christ this is what a lot of believers need there are many people who quote scriptures but the word of god is not in them because the word of god is not the issue of cramming it is the holy spirit that brings you into that reality if the holy spirit does not bring you into that reality you can pretend that's why a lot of people say by stripes i'm healed by stripes i'm healed and nothing happens it is the holy spirit that brings you into that reality you see that the Holy Spirit is really what we need in the kingdom this is not the issue of being a Pentecostal this is not the issue of getting born again I know that we represent different churches different denominations take your mind away from that and let's focus on the kingdom Jesus was born because the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary Jesus was raised from the dead because the Holy Spirit came and quickened his mortal body. Hallelujah. And we are born when we acknowledge it is the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And then we stand in the finished work of Christ. Let me, oh, I don't have all the time. I need to touch some other things. Maybe one time we'll take it as a series. But let me say something a little about the finished work of Christ. What is the finished work of Christ? The finished work of Christ talks about 
all that was accomplished on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ this is what we call the finished work of Christ the finished work of Christ is what the realities that are available unto us on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ redemption our health victory over Satan the guarantee that we are going to get to heaven everything that we do in the kingdom is on account of the finished work of Christ but this is where I must making the finished work of Christ a practical experiential reality in your life is not just by confession alone is by walking with the spirit and you will imagine to that are you listening to me this is where a lot of people miss it so someone can be suffering from certain things and he just says lord in the name of jesus i take you by your word your word has said this and that and that why do you call me lord lord but will not do there is a doing there is a doing brothers and sisters there is a doing this is not the works of the flesh because they are motivated by the spirit are you listening to me they are works but not of the spirit james said show me your faith by your confession and i will show you my faith through the things that i'm doing so when people attack works they say look everything is grace no works the only work is speaking it's not exactly correct the only thing is that if our work is a derivative of the law of moses and the flesh then it is not consistent with the with the lord are you listening to me but then if it is a derivative of the activity of the spirit of god in your life that is the labor that brings you into rest hallelujah so examine your life tonight many of you have confessed jesus as lord and you truly did it but let me tell you something you are not walking with the spirit there is no change in your life there is no evidence in your life and many of us have been convincing ourselves you don't pray the things of the kingdom don't interest you have you seen many people that love god yet they have no passion for the things of god look at me you're a university student do you love your lectures do you love your lectures if you have a test and arsenal is playing football which one will you go for because of the value are you listening to me that's a sign that you are a real are you listening to me that you love but there are many believers who tell you they are born again they don't even know the jesus they are talking about they have no interest for him those kinds of people if they do not watch their lives they are going to miss it and they will go to hellfire hallelujah there are many men of god who carry bibles go to church they don't love god they have no desire it just so happened that they attended seminaries or schools of ministry and then they just ordained them they just found themselves in ministry and they believe that because they have a date that they put that they gave their lives in quotes to jesus christ they just believe you see that these people do not love god they are still doing idolatry they are still drinking they are still doing everything they are doing and they tell you when the role is called up yonder not everybody will be there some people will not be there I'm teaching this message so that some of us will begin to intercede for our loved ones because some people and families have been deceiving themselves but they are not known by God I don't want to deceive you I want you to walk authentic you must look at the life of a believer sister you must be able to tell me what you used to do that you are not doing now if not the life of God is not truly finding expression in you Are you listening to me when somebody starts smoking Igbo after two weeks you will know correct either he begins to behave foolish and stupid number one or number two his mouth begins to turn black or number three his life changes anytime he sees you he's just hiding something pieces of paper something is happening to him that is an evidence that is beginning to adopt a new lifestyle what is your own and it so happens that if it is the same spirit that is working on all of us that means our experiences should be similar this is what makes us a family of faith 
so is something not wrong that many of our churches have different versions of born again that don't come near at all it means something is wrong because if it is the same spirit of the living god that is instituting these experiences the bible tells us that the church in corinth the church in ephesus the church different churches but it was when you read the writings of all the people that wrote the bible you see a consistency that all of them acknowledge the lord and they walked according to the principles of the kingdom some of them were 200 300 years apart but you saw the consistency what is wrong I'll stop here on this topic. This is Sila. I'm just, I'm just communicating tonight the things that have been brewing in my spirit. I trust God for grace, for God to permit us to start writing books, man of God. There are books that must be written. Are you listening to me? There are books. There are tapes. This is what, honestly... If you have a message like this, it is on this ground you can now pray and say, Lord, a TV ministry is necessary. Are you listening to me? Not all these things that people do. Everybody just wants to go on air. 10 minutes of noise. 15 minutes of noise. Do you have a message to the body of Christ? Look at how many of you have been challenged this night. Many of you will live quietly and go and find out, is this true? Some of you will be arguing on the way. I don't believe this. I will study, sir. This is what happened to the body of Christ. When Jesus taught, the Bible says some were afraid, some were astonished, some were angry and they left. How come we teach in our churches and many people are so happy? Something is supposed to rattle you and challenge you. It's come. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to talk about is i want to talk a little about the end times please look at me in a few minutes we'll round up even if it's 10 minutes i feel it's important i share this god has been showing me visions and i've been having a lot of revelations and i think i will share some of them right now god has permitted me to bring some of them hallelujah in the last few weeks, I've been seeing things that have baffled my spirit. And have, if not because I trust the spirit of God, I may not even believe some of them. Hallelujah. One time, I looked and I saw creatures upon the earth like giants. Please follow me. They were almost maybe 14 or 15 feet it looked like they were half humans and half whatever something else hallelujah and then when i got up i said lord what is what is all this what are you showing me and then god didn't say anything and so i kept quiet and when i slept i had the same experience not exactly the same but the same again i said lord you are you are showing me something and then the lord began to teach me from first john he said test all spirits please follow me very carefully tonight he said what test all spirits because not every spirit is of god he said herein we know the spirit of error and the spirit of christ any spirit that does not acknowledge that jesus has come in the flesh then I began to study. There was a man, I won't call his name, his materials are not, you don't, you must be a real matured believer. He's a Christian to study his teachings. If you study his teachings when you are not grounded with the word, it will shake you. In fact, because of the experiences he had, he forbade his works from being released until he died. And then a few people said that they would release some of his materials. I read something about his material and I just threw it away. Now listen, I said all this to say this. The Lord began to speak to me about the one world government. Many of you have heard of the one world government. 
if you are not let me tell you let me have your attention tonight because as long as you are alive this involves you the one world government where the whole world will come under one leader who will seem to bring peace and prosperity upon the earth and i said lord how come the look at boko haram here al-qaeda here this and that at what is it what is that event that will make people throw aside their differences are you listening to me look at people your some of you your neighboring states they are fighting they are swearing to god that they will leave this land this is our land and they are fighting look at the kind of confusion that is in the world yet the bible tells us a time will come everybody will lay aside every other agenda and agree to submit to an authority and i said lord how will that happen and the lord began to give me this revelation please listen hmm. the lord told me that there will be a deception that is coming upon the earth this is a prophetic teaching now just give me 10 minutes and we'll pray are you listening to me a manifestation how many of you have heard what we call ufos unidentified flying objects how many of you have heard all of those things now the lord told me this year there will be an increase of that activity and strange beings from other planets listen to me will begin to come to planet earth it had been happening but in secret and the lord said this is a sign that is coming is very close i said lord can you prove this to me from scripture and the lord said yes and i will show you from scripture follow me matthew or let's take the, the version of luke luke 9 please listen to what i'm teaching you this is a matured believers class 55 are you there but he turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what manner of spirits ye are of aha uh -huh. that means there are different manners of spirits he said you do not know the manner of spirits ye are of and then i didn't understand turn with me to chapter 17 now 17 verse 26 blessed jesus thank you i want to show you a mystery tonight open your eyes open your eyes open your ears and then you'll understand that the lord is he let's read 26 one to read can we project it is it possible he said and as it was in the days of who noah so shall it be in the days of the son of man look up he says as it was in the days of who noah that means an event took place around the time of noah that will repeat itself in the earth and this is a sign that the son of man is coming look up the Bible tells us in Genesis 6 that a time came when the sons of God came upon the earth and slept with the daughters of men. And they gave birth to a race we call Nephilim. Giants. Genesis 6. Genesis 6. Help us, Lord. Verse 1 to 4. Ah, I wish I had time. I wish I had time. Genesis 6, 1 to 4. I need to show you this. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. Verse 2. That the sons of God, look at this. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. The word fair there means beautiful. And they took them as wives of all which they chose. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. 
for that he also is flesh yet in his days shall be 120 and then verse 4 let's read again verse 4 and then we'll stop there listen he said they were what these were the products listen to me these were the products of an intercourse between normal human beings and certain beings that were not human and also after that when the sons of god came in in other words sleep unto the daughters of men and they bear children and they became mighty men nimrod goliath you see them these were giants mighty men they were not normal they had superhuman strength six fingers six archaeologists right now have discovered fossils of people ahead of humans that were as big as this that a time came that giants you know i found this and i kept quiet with it for weeks and then a few days ago i went to sidrod site and boom i saw the shock of my life they just interviewed certain people who began to talk about some of these things i cannot speak in details because doing this i will have to offend many ministries to say this and so I would, this is not the platform to share this are you listening to me but then i will show you the things that are happening that in was it 1967 one of the presidents of america some of these identified objects came and they had meetings with them three times it was concealed classified informations that they are upon the earth what is their work as it were in the days of noah so they are come you know the bible says the earth was corrupt and he said only noah was righteous the word righteous there is not blameless it means his dna was not corrupted so he said now you and your eight children and everybody come in because the whole race were corrupted by these people many of you may say oh son of god i know there have been different teachings that angels the word son of god was used in ancient times to mean any deity that is above humans but lower than god you get my point and the only deity that falls within that category are the angels because there's a place in scripture it said to none of the angels did he say at any time thou art my son this day have i begotten you the word son there is not son as in the son that was used for jesus christ this was an interplay of greek and hebrew words let me just give you one scripture to prove job 38 job 38 if you can project it for us please quickly we're out of time we must pray hmm. job 38 verse 7 i'm sharing this with with you because you are part of the army who would have known that the star that appeared in the sky was a sign that something was happening hallelujah other people were just looking and said the sky is bright but some people knew the bible says the men of Issachar they had an understanding of the time many of you say what is the relevance of this hold on read he said when the morning stars sang together and the sons of god shouted for joy let's start from 36 please 36 and 37 36 thank you jesus he said who had put wisdom in the inward parts or who had given understanding to the heart 37 who can number the clouds what did i say 37 i'm sorry six and seven that was a mistake i found a very interesting scripture where the bible he said whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened he said and who had laid the corners thereof seven when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of god shouted for joy this was during creation man was not yet there yet they were given certain names morning stars sons of god remember nebuchadnezzar when he looked and saw four people in the fire he said the appearance of the fourth was like what a deity that is not human and he called him a son of god so it was it was common for them to call anything superhuman but these were the fallen angels that slept with the daughters of men a lot of theologians teach that the sons of god were the progenitors of seth that's not true it's not correct it doesn't make sense listen the lord began to show me that this is how hiv and cancer came let me tell you something there are there are demonic entities parading themselves as aliens and unidentified flying objects 
coming to have dealings with men as a reward they are giving them super intelligence as a reward look at the scientific research on immortality that they are doing right now recently they caught someone removed a chip from him that was given to him by an alien and he would last 450 years wake up you wake up every morning and move around in your world and have no knowledge the bible says they know not neither do they understand when the lord began to show me this i said lord what is all this what is going on and the lord told me as it were in the days of noah it's in your bible jesus said it hallelujah hmm. this is the event of the rapid manifestation of beings to planet earth that would distract everybody in planet earth and the issue of mini crisis will, will, will be left for a greater emergency and there will be need to unify the world as one mm. hallelujah there are so many things happening right now an observation of all of these ufos these deities they are demons they are devils they are not just coming for long the people the witch in our villages have always known that planet earth is not the only planet that is inhabited science is just discovery our grandfathers and grandmothers told us this since because people who do astral travel have traveled to many planets and come back there is a shock this 2013 new market is an unfolding of many things i tell you this thing so that you will know and you will see and you will be wise jesus said you do not know what spirit you are in because there are many people who will go to mountains for prayer and fasting and suddenly will have certain beings appear that look like god and their interaction with those beings will leave them they will come back with acumen and intelligence that you cannot imagine they will think it's a god encounter but they have traded themselves the sons of god sleeping with the daughters of men this is why i'm teaching you this there are many men of god that what they met was not the holy spirit are you listening to me listen to me that's why i showed you that scripture he said test all spirits because they will appear and manifest to people and attempts to corrupt the race hallelujah and we will embrace them and be happy we're the generation right now where everybody wants every kind of thing ladies want a macho man well built nice there are many they are coming we are five feet or six feet you hold on 14 feet is coming hallelujah what is their goal to corrupt the race to corrupt the race and so because of that what happens there is a rebuilding of the ark that noah built and this is the ark there is a rebuilding hallelujah there is a rebuilding and he told noah he said gather you and all your people because i'm going to cause rain to come and it will judge the earth it will judge the earth right now there's all kinds of things happening in our atmosphere the chlorofluorocarbon is depleting there is a rise in sea levels the lord showed me go and read um follow the january message i told you there will be a greater flood this year than last year because the sea level is going to rise greatly when we traveled to niger i was asking joe to teach me some things let me just find out about this sea level thing i saw floods of catastrophic phenomenon because a major part of the water in the world is saved as ice and now because of the heat that is coming upon the earth is melting the water so it's eating up landmass are you listening to me this is what is happening and there are many things that are going on i read an article january 13th the prime minister of russia was telling obama that he should stop hiding the issue of aliens and he should open up and tell the world the truth is there you can go and get it online what are these people hiding 
is there something our governments know is there something the un and the african union and the g8 knows is there have they been deceiving us there's too much drama happening in this world and many believers are just laughing the bible says but there is a part that no fowl know it there is a part where the whelps of no lion has trodden upon these are the secret things that belong to them that fear the lord Do you see the reason why the Bible says, if not that God averted this, even the elect will be deceived. Even the elect. Who are the elect? Even the elect. What kind of phenomenon will happen that will deceive an authentic man of God? This is why God is granting us this knowledge so you'll be strong. Because you will begin to see pastors are the most gullible. When things come like this, we just receive it as a new move in our quest to get into deeper things in god what happens we begin to see certain manifestations right now there are different kinds of teachings immortality and all kinds of things people begin to question the issue of the rapture some of this revelation came by these demons are you getting what i'm telling you now so they come and download it and then a lot of people get up under these inspirations and they come and they say there is a there is a depth that found out that's why i told you the spirit of christ will make you become like the word this is not to make you afraid but is to forewarn you especially those of us who are just running elter skelter with everything new you call rema are you listening to me everything new people just call rema they say i was sleeping there are many encounters that people call heaven encounters that are demonic. That place they went to was not heaven. Because the things they brought back, these are not heavenly things. I know someone who just, um, who just got saved. One, one guy like this unbeliever. And then he said he went to hell. He mentioned the name of every man of God you know. Everyone including those who are alive. He said they are all going to hell. I said Wait, what is this nonsense? Don't laugh. Don't laugh. This is the spirit at work now. The guy is innocent. He just got born again. You see, this is why those who will serve in the ministry must be thoroughly furnished. There's no issue of just getting up and carrying gift of the spirit and running. You must gain structure in the spirit. Otherwise, you will be deceived and you will deceive others. Are you listening to me? There are all kinds of strange, these spirits are appearing to men of God and leading them to read all kinds of books diabolic books to find paths to prosperity and the rest when i was small there was a book i saw in the library one day i never knew anything much about the holy spirit hallelujah but i know that i had a voice that warned me it's called the greater works of solomon don't you ever find yourself reading that book these are satanic books right now they write all kinds of books I warned you about a book called 48 laws of power many of you have seen it you like it when you read that book you can become a millionaire in less than two months but you have mortgaged your soul for hell it teaches you the spiritual principles of seduction you will capture the souls of men literally this is what many of our men of god are reading another spirit are you following me now as it were in the days of noah so you see a man who does not fast does not pray does not build himself but is coming in with all kinds of rema from wherever he tells you i was caught up in the spirit and i went to one plane in the spirit and i met a man his name is so 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 and he said he will walk with me uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. that's the spirit of error it's already happening to many people in this nigeria they go and lock themselves and they are interacting with strange spirits that are not of God. They are coming up with revelations that are deviating the body. That's why I told you people to, to listen to the message on the apostate church. Some of our parents are already victims of those people now. Because some of them, deities appeared to them and told them that they are in the same status with Jesus Christ. And that every man that believes in them will receive eternal life. Oh, they are on TV. You don't watch them. They have their regalia that they wear. Pastor, is, is that true? Many of them. You share their experiences. They tell you one Jesus appeared to them and told them that there is no need he functions. 
they should be him on the earth. So it is within their power to give men eternal life. And they have many followers. This is the deceit. Some of us, they are our pastors, we belong to their churches. It's time for you to repent and call your family members quick and tell them as it were in the days of Noah. It's already happening now. These spirits will make deities God. Notice every time these spirits found expression with men, it made the men to want to be like God. Look at Nimrod. Nimrod Kush suddenly assumed the position of God and exerted influence. Remember Nebuchadnezzar wanting to build a city. Every time this spirit manifests, and this is what is happening in many of our churches right now. There are men of God who have their thrones and their rings and their chairs. It was given to them by a spirit. When you come and kiss it, it gives you eternal life. Let me tell you tonight, listen to me, I'm telling you straight to the point. These things are not the operation of the spirit of Christ. Hear me koinonia, I'm speaking to you, this is the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is not to give you a critical spirit, but it's to help you discern. This is why in the days to come, every believer should stay with the Holy Spirit and hold your Bible carefully. This rat race of running man of God, me, man of you will you will land into all kinds of things. A young man came three like two months or so ago to come and meet me. He went to meet a man of God in, in Abuja and they took him popular man in Abuja. They took him somewhere. I was shocked when he was telling me this. He went to different other places and they told him to turn to the wall that the Holy Spirit was going to speak. The guy told me the building shook. He said the building shook. They asked him to carry something that a paper with stone inside, outside. He said he brought it and it burned to ashes in his presence. Talk about signs and wonders. So you don't just see every man stand on TV and just doing signs and one. I'm not teaching you to be judgmental, but I'm teaching you to be matured in the spirit. Hallelujah. So a man comes to your house and looks at you and says, your father has this and that and say, hey, prophet of God, calm down. You must learn to discern. Of which spirit? Jesus said, know ye not what spirit you are made of. There are many spirits that are aiding men to do different things and they are not the spirit of God. Hallelujah. They are empowering many people to make signs and wonders. Many of the musicians and the artists that you see, most of these people met with this spirit and it exploded them. I'm telling you, Mm -hmm. most of them are possessed with this spirit or most of them met this. the songs that they write come from this spirit i used to have one one naughty boy he's now late when we were in secondary school this guy told me that there was a woman you know i was the one in charge of deliverance and prayer when anything happens they come and call me this guy used to meet us and tell us that there was a nice woman that used to come to him he said she didn't her legs don't touch the ground it looks like the leg of a fish that she used to advise him to read books this once he's four on the dot this guy will run to our chapel she'll go and enter we planned one day we said all right be talking to her us will run and come and enter he said when he's singing special number she joins him sometimes she takes him to the place where i won't mention the name of the water some of you won't drink it again but uh, only god knows how many hallelujah she takes him there they play together aha uh -huh. these are these beings and deities i'm telling you that boy was convinced he started doing things like a woman i used to look at him the thing used to pain me so what kind of boy are you like this the boy was gentle he had an excellent voice and he was not like that he said it was when he met the woman he said they used to sing like with her I told him, I remember, I told him, tell the woman we are here. Let's see what she will say. Then we are powerless. The woman didn't even respond to itself. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to pray. But are you seeing the relevance of some of the things I'm sharing with you? So believers, let's get back to the foundation. And start re-examining what our faith is standing upon start being Bereans to begin to scrutinize the teachings that we have been receiving please don't criticize any man of god 
we don't castigate men of God, but we attack things that are not consistent with the word of God. Are you listening to me? You need to go and... That's why I told a lot of people, you see a man, sir, he's not praying, he's not fasting, he's not staying with the word. Be careful, though. Be careful. The Bible says, even the elect, if care is not taken, they will be deceived. Americans are hiding a lot of things from us. Our government know a lot of classified information they will not tell us. I bring you a message tonight. We are not alone in this planet. And the earth is about to receive rude visitations. Because mankind have already signed pacts and covenants with these spirits. On behalf of many people. And this is, is permeating nations. Are you surprised? These children that are running and shooting people in America. You ask the children. They will begin to tell you they are seeing somebody. They are talking with somebody. How can a little child just stand up? He's not conscious of being possessed. But you see him just carry a gun and start killing people. A little child. You really think that energy is his own? Can you crack a gun and shoot it? It will throw you down. It will throw you down if you hold a gun, a, a gun to shoot it. The recoil effect, it will throw you down. Yet a small child will hold it. This is a super, superhuman ability. Are you not seeing? Brothers and sisters, examine it. So that you do not carry a false anointing. So that you do not carry a false power. The Holy Spirit is the only hope of this generation. If we leave the Holy Spirit in search for many things, you will get different devils and demonic spirits. Rise up on your feet. Basketballers right now, NBA, look at me. Because of the effects of vitamins, certain vitamins and supplements on them, they are looking for certain biogenetic ways of making them mighty without having to take supplements. You see that? What a, what a good way to prepare the part of the coming of these beings. Because men want to be tall and gigantic. Look at me. How do you think the Egyptians build the pyramids? How do you think they build those pyramids? You are hearing certain things that will make you... I know for some of us, you just say, well, thank God, boy, it doesn't concern me. Let it concern you because this is about heaven and hell, brothers and sisters. Are you listening to me? I do not want you to be deceived. I don't want you to miss out. You are going to pray. Three prayer points and we are done tonight. We are going to say, Lord grant me grace re-examine me if i'm not standing in the truth react i re-examine myself in the light of your word lift your voice please pray everyone inside and outside in a generation where we are hungry for power we are hungry for knowledge the bible says and knowledge shall increase the bible says we should re-examine ourselves and find out whether we are still in the faith heaven is real listen to me Hell is real. Jesus is coming soon. I bring you this clarion call. Jesus is truly coming. And there are some people that will not make it. There is deceit going around the world. This is not to put fear in you. It's to let you depend upon the word. Pray. Hallelujah. Look up. Next prayer point. Jesus began to pray in Matthew chapter 6. He said, when you pray, say this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Many of you do not know the relevance of that prayer. He said, Lord, do not allow us to enter into these things, but deliver us from evil. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace and discernment. 
as I explore realities in the realm of the spirit, as I listen to preachings, as I go for conferences and conventions, as hands are laid upon me, lead me not into temptation, O God. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from deceit. Pray for your family. Some of them are already in deep deceit. Prophets, senior apostles, different people. Make sure you are praying for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to pray. Listen. Look up. The Bible says the sons of Issachar they had an understanding of the times. See, thank God for your coming to Koinonia. Many of you do not know what the Lord is doing in your life. These are not the kinds of messages you hear in many meetings. The men of God don't even care about these kinds of things. But there is a reason why God is giving you this message. Because as this darkness is happening, I bring you another news. There are saviors that are imagined. This is why I am telling you this. Because it concerns you. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, and saviors shall arise. Koinonia, hear me. The shofar will soon blow. Hear me. I truly believe that in the days to come, the signs and the wonders that will happen in the sky, many students will run away from their campuses and go back home. It will no longer just be an issue of what you have or what qualification. Signs will happen in the atmosphere that will rattle governments, will rattle people. When that happens, know that it's short time for us. It's time we will come out and let the world know we are not ignorant. We have been trained. When that time comes, that is the time for prosperity for us. When the governments fail, we will tell them, let us teach you. We have been schooled in the spirit. When those demons come, that is the time we will cast them away. Listen, let me tell you something. Until the church is raptured, evil cannot prevail. We are the ones who will hold evil. Listen, 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 listen. This is happening faster than you can imagine. Because an ancient scroll, I want all of you who know Sidrot, thank God you have fast internet. You go and watch the last two programs. The last two programs that they interviewed a 900 year scroll was found hallelujah of someone who had a vision 900 years it was found in the vatican it talked about all the popes that would be in the earth it mentioned the 112th one who is pope francis that was just put and according to that vision he said he's the last pope he said he's the pope that will be there even during the tribulation listen to me i'm speaking to you you don't think that there is time some of you are just waiting the world is shifting are you not seeing what is happening hear me this is not meant to discourage you are you listening to me this is the time when the sons of light will come out that's why you must subject yourself to these dealings the time is short for the manifestation of the sons the bible says we will literally hold the hands of darkness and say until christ comes we will literally stop these ufos and the rest we will frustrate them believe me Ha-parat-ha-kaya. men will come out with the spirit of joshua and speak to the son and say stand still he told job he said has thou commanded thy money and we will speak to those powers and say where were you when he founded the earth when he put the constellations together where were you we will speak languages of audacity and power and of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Part of the revelation of that scroll was when the former Pope was going to hand over to this Pope. 
according to the scroll he said the, this former pope benedict was going to handle to hand over to pope francis in march 2012 so those who were doing the research they were surprised why was it in 2013 now only they found out that actually the pope officially left office in march 2012 it's just that it was within some of the people in the vatican just as you know the culture is they will give some time things are unfolding everything jesus said listen the bible should be your best textbook right now it's not just the issue of spiritual growth this is the prophetic map for the journey that is left for the believers when it's time for us to check up we are not going with it we we'll leave it for those who think we are playing they will need it daily the bible says they will run to the mountains fall on us and the mountain will not fall at that time i don't know about you but i'll be part of those glorious people let me tell you brothers and sisters soon we are checking out of this place but before then you must give god your best the time is up the time if you've ever had any clarion call i'm announcing to you today everything that jesus said would happen has happened right now iran have prepared their nuclear bombs let me vow to you they are going to blow it are you listening to me the bible said it already the bible said it is going to happen hallelujah there will be a bombing the bible talks about bombing the oil the oil fields of arabia and it will burn day and night it's in your bible in your bible many wonders will happen let me tell you something upon the surface of the earth already many nations russia and the rest are already partnering to raise conspiracy against each against israel the bible says god will fight for them there will be a mighty slaughter right now there is already different moves for peace treaties and this is the kind of thing there there are already structures that will bring the antichrist i am convinced that the antichrist as a person is already in existence are you listening to me this is not to scare you we are not going as some beggarly people we will conquer and then we will leave this is what we are here nobody is shooting me i'm not dying not by the sword not by nothing let me, i i know no no accident no devil no sickness no outbreak of epidemic uh -uh. there is an immunity i've not been praying in tongues for nothing this is why i'm telling you build your spirit the days to come will be as it were the days of john lake many will be dying of epidemics but we know the spirit that brought it i will stand and say be still be far from my family hallelujah hallelujah we're rounding up there are already microchips i said this thing years ago listen i said this thing years ago that a time will come they will program degrees in microchips because they are already frustrated at the length of time it is taking people I, the bible says knowledge shall increase are you listening to me the earth is almost like a robot now everything is automated I foresee a time when they will program degrees in chips i read an article about certain activities of freemasons and illuminati and their job is to wipe at least one or two billion people they do not believe human beings are equal this is what was written in your book animal farm many of you have read it but you did not know that that's a prophecy all the movies you are watching now are telling you there is going to be a war between normal human beings and aberration x-men men in black i don't watch these films i do not see him what is the meaning of x-men x means what former men you just watch them and get entertained they are speaking a language to you they are, all the films you watch now they are saying prepare for war lord of the rings is telling you there is war on middle earth these guys are not just writing out of nothing notice in lord of the rings there were many kingdoms some not generally human beings are you saying that what do you think was in the mind of the producers they are not as daft as we make them look it's only in the church that we have people just jumping and somebody just prophesied the lord told me that this and that calm down tell us what is happening right now
the blueprint of the spirit. Believe us, our time of manifestation is closer than you can imagine. It's closer than you can imagine. I announced at the beginning of this month about the death of politicians and people in offices. Who, how many of you were here? And you had me announce to you. I just heard last week that the governor of Ekiti, the deputy governor of Ekiti, just died. And let me tell you something. We have to pray because many things are happening in this nation. Are you listening to me? The election for 2015 is already going on. They just fool us and keep us to stand in the sun. You stand with your voters card sweating. Meanwhile, one year ago, they've done it. Me, I'm telling you this. Pray, believers. There is a lot going on in this country. But you have a voice and you have a say. You can speak to the territories and know you are part of this. The devil will be afraid of you when he knows that you have this information. Last prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me access to genuine spiritual truth. I'm tired of things that are not helping me. I'm tired of things that are not relating to the blueprint of the spirit for now. Jesus is coming very soon. What you need right now is what is relevant for the time left. Lift your voice and say, Lord, grant me access to truth. When you are founded in truth, there will be no error. There will be no deceit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I advise everyone, please, go to sidroth.com.org. Write it. www.sidroth.org. www.sidroth.org. I want you to watch the last two episodes of his interviews. Some of you have fast internet. You can download the videos. I want you to watch it. This is not just for you to carry. It's just for your spiritual... Bless his name. Father, we give you all the because praise. Said a lot of things Thank you for tonight. May offend lots of ministries and Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's all about you. This is why we are here. This is why we do the things that we do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you. Lift your hands and just bless him, church. Bless him tonight. Sheta baba baba na kata brando sobrada. Zinde balakura sata brendi jalaboza. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We lift our hands to the heavens, and we bless you, the Maker of all good things. The one who decides the destinies of men before time. Bless his name. Shaba balada balada. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God. Help me worship us. And right now, through the good times, you are on your throne. You are God. Sing one more time. You're God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone, and right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Bless Him for your life. Bless Him for our students. We are proud of them. He's done a mighty work in their lives. Nemba sudo la karado sebe de balada bakaria de balada bo. Rakata baba ka prande gete prendi satali abakora sata balada bakata prende balada bash. 
Raka baba ba masata brandisha de bele de boss. It's for your glory, it's for your kingdom, for your majesty to see your kingdom come, to see the nations bow at your name. Mambre da jeleke brandisha balia kapra dosoto la bakaria da balada. It's all because we love you. It's all because we are desperately passionate about your kingdom. We love what you love. We hate what you hate. We subscribe to your policy. We subscribe to your government. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. With everything, say, with everything we have, this is why we live. We will shout for your glory. why we do everything that we do this is why we teach this is why we preach this is why we abstain from every appearance of evil this is why we are passionate about you we live to see your kingdom come father we thank you there are not many reasons why we do these things it's for your glory to see your kingdom come to see the nations change to transform destinies this is why we do these things that we do hallelujah bless him once again for your life and for the privilege for the privilege 
of being part of what God is doing. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. Let I King believe that I Oh, oh, son. Let his name be lifted up. Oh, oh, son. Let my king be lifted to welcome everyone tonight is a great time we are not only celebrating the word of God we are graduating our students and we give him all the praise I thought he would celebrate Jesus <laughs> hallelujah we thank him for the power of vision we thank him for wisdom we thank him for leadership we thank him for grace we thank him for counsel. We thank him for good people. We thank him for the gift of genuine people. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hug one another. Greet one another. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. We have a special guest in our midst today, Pastor Tula, Pastor of CGC. Celebrate him. Come on, Koinonia. Celebrate the grace. We bless you, sir. We honor you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Now, um, we have to be very, very fast. School of Ministry students celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, they deserve to clap and laugh and shout hallelujah they are conquerors more than conquerors hallelujah now i apologize the principal is not around bishop he was um he couldn't make it so i'll just read his speech we'll start right away so permit me if i just read his speech he sent his speech and he sent his congratulatory message it's my pleasure to congratulate the maiden graduating students of ENI School of Ministry. The journey began some months ago, and today we are glad to see you beautifully dressed with hearts full of butterflies. This is Bishop. I'm reading. I'm principal now. I'm principal. Hallelujah. Such is life. Nothing free is worth a dime. You paid the price and took pains to go through every bit of the school's activities with an intention to get you acquainted and well equipped with the basic principles of Christianity and ministry. Your graduation is a commissioning and inspiration to go for greater realms of knowledge and kingdom impact. It is imperative that you remember the following. Number one, the basic course was intended to whet your appetite for greater learning. This is very important. You may graduate tonight, but learning does not stop. Go for knowledge in your chosen area of calling, equipping yourself with all that you need to deliver effectively. Job 36 verse 3 says, I will fetch my knowledge from afar. Hallelujah. Number two, be willing to teach the body of Christ all the truth that you have acquired. By doing so, the gross ignorance of God's counsel in the church today will be prevented. 1 Timothy 3 verse 2 says, to be apt to teach hallelujah so not only have you been trained and prepared and equipped you must be apt to teach and dispense the knowledge number three don't let the noise of the opinion of others drown out your own conviction and intuition this is very powerful have courage to follow your own heart while you don't take for granted the vital ingredient of submission to an earthly authority 
a man or a friend over your life for accountability hallelujah very important you must be men of conviction and respect authority number four in a world of presumption and haste bend your knees and ask like paul in the book of acts chapter 9 verse 6 he said what will you have me do for therein lies divine direction and obedience to god this is very powerful it's easy for us to have the knowledge that we have gotten and be puffed up by that knowledge we must seek god and seek his will at every point in our lives i want to appreciate apostle joshua selman for his incessant labor and relentless commitment to building the students in all ramification professor js marie please celebrate him her daddy for his fatherly advice and moral support pastor jakes adeyinka for his commitment as a tutor of the school the management of god's time secondary school for giving us their school hall free of charge let's celebrate them the pastors of rema chapel zaria for always giving us their church hall and the eni protocol department for always being there for us hallelujah thank you finally i pray that the lord will bless and keep you that in this crooked and perverse generation you will stand out as men and women of integrity when christ comes he will find us faithful and true it is our prayers and desire that you will experience that with the experience we have gained with this first set we'll be able to make the subsequent ones better in terms of organization venue and assessment long live eni school of ministry god bless you and congratulations one more, one more time. <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord i want to specially congratulate all the students um you will have to be with them to really understand what it is that they have gone through is a four month program but they spent 11 months hallelujah 11 months of um, endurance of training of building praise the lord now part of the visions of this ministry is to impart knowledge and to use the tools of education mentorship and impartation to raise and train kingdom ambassadors in ministry leadership and even in the secular environment i want you to know that we're a very visionary ministry what you see today is only the seed compared to what god is going to be doing in the future and um, we believe that part of the apostolic ministry is to be able to not only administrate and govern but to build and to prepare people hallelujah the apostle was encouraging the church and he said that which you have been given he said commit thou to faithful men hallelujah you must commit it to faithful men and um it's my delight to see what god has done through the school of ministry this uh, is our very first set and um we have trained you please listen students there are five courses basically that we took pneumatology it was aimed at equipping them bringing them into an understanding of the ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer and please understand that our school of ministry is not just for the fivefold ministry hallelujah I, our vision is uh, to equip and to release kingdom ambassadors that will transform the world in business in government in family in the media across every strata of society to raise people who can make an impact in society if our christianity only ends by speaking in tongues and falling under the anointing we will never transform the world hallelujah the bible says go ye into all cosmos go into that system and bring in an ideology a value system hallelujah and what we are doing is consistent with scripture the bible says jesus taught certain people and after a certain time he sent 70 he sent 12 he sends them with an anointing he sent them with a message and the bible says they all returned that means they understood what he taught them they all returned rejoicing 
and they said even the devils were subject to us through thy name and so we we thank god for pneumatology it was a great course and then we taught you on leadership we believe that one key element that is lacking in our society and in the world even the church is leadership we have many anointed people we have many great men and women of god but we have very few leaders a true leader does not maintain followers he raises other leaders hallelujah and so it is with this sense of vision they were trained and taught different levels of leadership and then we taught on ministry hallelujah we touched on so many things homiletics the art of preaching different aspects of um, ministry then we taught on personal transformation i guess it was one of their best course <laughs> hallelujah it was very powerful discovering your uniqueness different kinds of things principles of personal transformation spiritual growth and um every other thing and we did teach them a lot of things i believe that their lives were really reordered the course is supposed to answer its name it's supposed to transform you and then we did finance hallelujah we did a lot on finance and um their exams was very serious it was and you know let me say something i i had the opportunity to appreciate them I think within the last two or three weeks to this time because I saw an increased level of unity I saw an increased level of initiative I had the opportunity to see some of them as they prepared for the exam you will know that they had understood this thing it wasn't because of certificate hallelujah they read together they prayed together they prepared together helping one another during the revision you know supporting one another and covering for one another and for me that was really the exam hallelujah that was the exam the preparation and um i can tell you our students are very intelligent when when i was marking their scripts i was amazed their exam was like jam hallelujah but they did exceptionally well exceptionally I graded their whole set a i mean not everybody but on an average hallelujah because of their performance we had to just give award to a few people and, and we're going to do that shortly because they were really exceptional they understood it and they deserve to um, be prayed for and we have seen um the wonder that God can do with any man who opens up himself. I saw many of them when they came in. Many came, but others could not endure for whatever reason. The Bible says, he that endures to the end. Hallelujah. So I want everybody, please rise and celebrate our students. Honor them. Please honor them, Koinonia. Rise and honor them. They are anointed. They have been trained. They have been built. We are proud of you. You are the seal of our apostleship and we thank God for everything. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I taught you personal transformation, we discussed something called the graph of life. Hallelujah. And in that graph my my goal please listen everyone because this applies the whole journey of a man's life is like a graph and it can be broken into four different phases hallelujah and we call the first stage the morning stage or the learning stage hallelujah and we put this to be the first 25 years of your life and we call the second stage the earning stage or the investment stage and that takes up the second 25 years of your life hallelujah and that that is the peak of your life the peak of your youthfulness and we call the third stage the stage 
of legacy, the evening stage, the third 25 years of your life, and the last stage, we call it rest. The last 25 years of your life. Are you listening to me? Please, everybody listen. Young or old, this is very important. And we taught the students that every man's life is broken into these four phases. What that means is that there is a season of your life when you should be preparing. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. That means he took advantage of certain kairos seasons in his life to build, to equip, the morning stage of every man's life is when you get knowledge. That is the time when you can make mistakes and go scot-free. How many of you have seen a learner driving? If he makes mistakes, you don't insult him because there is a big L behind his car. This is the morning stage. This is where a lot of us can make mistakes. It's like a baby trying to walk. This is where many of us may delay, may waste time and do a number of things. Listen to me. If at age 25, you are still trying to learn the basic principles that are required for life, for godliness, still trying to pursue your education, still trying to do everything, you are already behind time. Are you getting my point now? Whether you believe it or not, it's irrelevant. Hallelujah. Once you are past 25 years, whether you are prepared or not, you enter the second stage of your life. And it is expected that at this ending stage, you begin to put to use all of the knowledge, all of the information, the revelation, the associations and the friendships that you have built. Are you getting my point now? All of the friends you have made, the destiny helpers you have made, all the people, the mentors around your life, all of the information, your days of prayer and fasting and kingdom building at this level. This is the level where you have the opportunity to get married. You have the opportunity to raise and train another generation. Hallelujah. It is at this stage you are talking of building your house. If you build a house at age 70, there is nothing honorable about it. Are you getting my point? If you buy a car at age 70, it is, it's, it's not thanksgiving. That's a lot of sorrow. Hallelujah. Lamentations 327, please. Lamentations 327. I just want to challenge us and then we'll allow our fathers to come and speak words of advices and then we'll pray and, and bless the people. But I want to challenge someone tonight because there are some of us that need to wake up. There are many of us who are playing around with our lives and allowing society to convince us that we are young. Hallelujah. Lamentations 327 is projected. Can we read everyone? One to read. One more time. One more time. All right. Put your name there where there is a man. One to read. The Bible says it is good for a man to bear his yoke when because the glory of young people is their strength are you getting what i'm saying that means that there are seasons in your life when the heavens are unusually open for you to accomplish certain things you can stay awake through the night studying and building this is when you can make good friends because not everybody has achieved that level of success that causes the deceitfulness of riches. So you can edit the people in your life and build quality relationships. And then you get into the second stage of your life. And that stage is the ending stage. If you are in ministry, that is when you will do kingdom exploits. That is when you will do great things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's when you raise and train your children. That's when you build them in the fear of the Lord. 
It's at that stage you are supposed to wave goodbye to certain things. Poverty, childishness, a life of sorrow and begging. Certain things should leave your life at that stage. And then you get into the third stage of your life, the evening stage. At that level, you are supposed to turn back and begin to mentor and give back to the generation. That is the season of legacy. Are you listening to me? That's when you should be building the institutes. That's when you should be building the libraries. That's when you should, you should build schools and, and mentor the younger generation. That's when you should go into massive production of books. Documenting your persuasions for the next generation to study. Hallelujah. But there are so many people who physically they are already in the third season of their life. But in reality, it is at that level they are now trying to learn the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it this way. It says, teach us to number our days. Teach us to take cognizance. Teach us to take advantage and give maximize the opportunity for every day because he said the days are evil hallelujah are you following what i'm saying there are many of us right now inside and outside probably some of us just strolled here carelessly this night we are just playing around with our destiny playing all kinds of gimmicks with our lives bad associations bad friends watching all kinds of things wasting away our destinies the bible says awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light there are a number of parents in this place and i want to challenge you don't let your children just live their lives the way they just want and say it's all right they will end up being a liability to you in old age there is a saying in my in my place it says a donkey gives birth to his child so that it will rest hallelujah if a man at age 70 having children who are over 30 years matured man matured woman there are some of you even in your 30s you are still staying in your parents house getting up in the morning and insulting them and say you didn't give me two thousand pop see how far you are not ashamed of it you have entered the second phase of your life hallelujah and we laugh at it they call the guy a big boy or they call the lady this there are lots of ladies now you are young this is the time to build become a virtuous woman this is the time to pay the price and not keep flaunting around every married man just comes every tom dick and harry comes and picks you travels around you may be speaking in tongues but it's time to settle down playing all kinds of gimmicks with every guy coming i have 10 guys who like me wait and see how many of them will marry you by the time you are in your thirties, all the people who would have married you are already married and the graph begins to bend you are entering the third phase of your life whether you believe it or not is irrelevant hallelujah you don't want to use your pension to train your firstborn i'm challenging you there are many of us who we are not just serious tonight god is talking to certain people and i'm taking it very personal with the gentleman because you are the one who will be the head of the home there are many of us you don't know you are growing old you are shaving every week and you can't read the handwriting on the wall hallelujah please take it serious I, I really am not laughing tonight this was the burden this has been my contemplation pastor personal i hate irresponsibility and laziness hallelujah there are many of us you are not doing anything about your finances you're not doing anything about your life we still play around 
as big as you are your whole vision is to buy a trainers your whole vision is to play computer game what kind of life is that all the brothers tell yourself wake up shout it wake up I want you to preach it to yourself because this night even as we graduate these students this is a message i know that god is talking to some of you some of you are playing around with what i'm saying but there are some of you who are sitting down and they are saying lord talk to me i'm tired of childishness the bible says when i was a child i will never i will never allow any irresponsible man to marry my daughter if i'm a father no way you just come around strolling with your your sad jeans and all kinds of chain and a very stupid haircut that already describes your ideology and you bounce into the house and sit down and greet the father as if it's your mate you say um i i have seen a flower in your house go back it's not a gardener all kinds of things happening in our society there must come a time in every man's life where you preach to yourself you must become the prophet of your own life and lock the door and say wake up joshua selman wake up let me tell you something in life time has a way of humbling any arrogant person who doesn't listen time time you can fight people but you can't fight time time will gradually bend you till you kneel down hallelujah i want to ask you a question look at yourself and backtrack 10 years before now can you look at your life today and say you have made structural improvements and advancement with your life there are many of us the only advancement is the birthdays you have been celebrating you still have the same ideology in fact there's more trouble in your life now than there was 10 years ago because you are not listening some of us it starts from our relationship with god there are a number of people listening to me we are just not serious you go to church you do everything and to you it looks like it's not a serious thing and you want to get married what will you do when your child is sick and there's no doctor to take care of the person hallelujah what will you do when god forbid but something wrong like job happens you want to be a man you want to be the head of your home you want to be the priest of the house and you are still playing gimmicks and childishness let me tell you the truth when you stand to be married nothing really changes the same person who was misbehaving is just that you are a bunch of history on suit and once they finish you go back into your different mindsets brothers i'm talking to you tonight and god is speaking to you the gentleman came where is he stand up that the writer at his level in life look at the remarkable accomplishments that he has made we call that focus it's not magic let me tell you as many as people are in in this place i have the opportunity and the privilege of knowing a few people personally and i know that there are people who are visionaries but there are some of you even a notebook to evaluate your life you don't have one notebook to evaluate your life you've never gone for a retreat to lock the door and sit down no video games no nothing sit down and tell yourself where am i going some of us came from families where we suffered some of us while you were in school you had to pay your school fees by yourself some of us are still paying our school fees is that the kind of heritage you want to give your children hallelujah it's time to wake up tonight because God gave you the gift of time whatever you do with that time will determine your destiny I refuse to be a failure in life I will pay the price now I will cry now no matter what it will take ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts 
Oh, let the ancient words sing it one more time. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words in It's time to wake up. Gentlemen, God is talking to you. Not us. You. God is telling you it's time to wake up. There are some of you here, the way you are seated, your own is that you are stubborn to a fault. Let me address it a bit. As you are sitting down, looking at me like this, stubborn to everybody. There are many of us who are giving our parents and our loved ones all kinds of headache. You are not adding any value in your house, but you are causing a lot of trouble. Hallelujah. You want to be treated as a king. You want to do it. We cause a. Let me tell you something. The Bible talks about a child who disrespects his parents. He says his days will be cut short. How did he say? He would die in the midst of his days. There are many of us here. You collect money and tell lies and change figures. And some of our poor parents, they go selling their properties and send money and we collect it and feel like we are big boys. Living a life that you have not entered truly. Whereas you should spend time buying books and find out what is the secret to greatness in life. How can I come out of this weakness? Many of us are there stealing money from our parents. You tell your brother you've not paid school fees. You tell your uncle. They all give you the money. You gather it. In two weeks you've blown it. Living a false life. As a student, you are wearing suits that even workers are not wearing. You think you are a big boy. You are foolish. Hallelujah. This is the problem with a lot of us. We are playing around. My father preached a message many years ago. The name of the message is Gambling with Destiny. This is how many of us are gambling with our destiny. Let me tell you something. If you are not being useful in the earth, there is no reason why you should continue living. Everything is sustained according to its ability to contribute to the earth. What are you contributing? God is asking you a question. Those of you outside, please listen to me very carefully. Whether you are sitting on the fence, whether you are standing where, just listen. Please, all the brothers stand up. Aside from our parents. All the brothers stand up. If you are not sure whether you are a man or woman, stand up. Join them. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Today, I make a commitment to be responsible with my life. Say in the name of Jesus. Today, I part ways with childishness. I part ways with irresponsibility. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to pay the price, whatever it may cost me, to be a responsible person. I make a vow that I will be a blessing to the kingdom, to my family, to everyone around me. I make a commitment that my children will call me blessed my wife will call me blessed my generation will call me blessed that's right god bless you please sit down sisters i want to talk to you now you see the way the way god designed this life huh is such that you will always reap what you sow not what your neighbor sowed he says do not be deceived god cannot be mocked that means if you don't reap what you sow except if the mercy of god comes in you have mocked god hallelujah i need to talk to the ladies i was talking with my mom pastor 
and we we spoke with my mom for over 20 minutes yesterday and we were just analyzing the ladies in our generation we we're just talking with my mom hallelujah and my mom was just expressing her concern she was saying kai there are many marriages two weeks they are not doing again let me tell you something most of what is making our ladies to run away from home our parents went through hundred times it and they still remain you are leaving home because the guy forgot your birthday <laughs> see that i'm not doing again how can he forget my birthday movie nigerian film facebook whatsapp this this is what it has re-engineered us out of wisdom into something else he said oh foolish galatians who have bewitched you this is not how you started what happened who bewitched you he called it bewitching to cause you to err using the tool of deception hallelujah many things that look flamboyant i tell you with all sincerity many i i feel very sad for many ladies because the ideologies we have right now i'm sorry to say it i know it's not all of us but there are many of us if we don't repent and change we are going to be bad wives and bad mothers hallelujah an average lady will see a child fall down or a child poo poo and she's holding her nose and running away you want to marry what in your opinion There are many ladies right now as you're seated here there is there is a boyfriend in ibadan there is the one you met on facebook in worry there is one in kaduna there's one around maybe koinonia or around this one is the one that manages your immediate emotions don't laugh oh i'm talking to you tonight let me tell you if god is god and you don't repent you will see that you are you are laying you are investing in your future and every investment yields in the future you will not see the same thing you sold you will see a harvest hallelujah there are many of us maybe not here but i'm saying i'm preaching apostolically because many people will be listening to these messages troubling a family a man has married his wife he was in your presence they say what god has joined let no man put asunder your own is more than asunder you have created war and you are happy sugar daddy he's giving you money doing every kind of thing i don't care whether you come out and give tight here number one you are entitled to go to hell let's even start from there number two you cannot make a meaningful life this is not the way of the kingdom hallelujah there are many of us ladies talking gossiping that's our own to settle down focus on your future we're always talking about what this person did have you had this just what is your own business everyone has his destiny true or false mm. we have lost family values in our generation values of respect values of dignity a lady will come and see men eat and she can't pack the plate she's sitting in the midst of the men talking about football and feeling like a hot chick and then one brother will come and he's carrying say hey please carry this one too and the brother who has been looking at her will say lord it's over i've gotten the word thank you jesus i've heard what you are saying later on you see people running why is nobody coming you think the brothers let me tell you every brother is not looking for a preacher I don't need a preacher in my life when i'm already preaching i want peace shout peace. peace singing choruses does not make a wife virtue makes a wife hallelujah many of us there are many ladies here you have never gone to sit down with a married woman or an elderly woman to say mommy teach me there are ladies here as you are looking at me you can't cook you know it the last person that ate your food lied to you and you were smiling you too you saw what you did does it look like what people are doing around many of us are just laughing you think you are pretty and then that's all sorry 
the beautiful ones have been born so it will take more than beauty it was when we were growing up they say beautiful ones have not been born so if all you eat the only value you have to offer to your husband is a beautiful face you are dreaming you better wake up this night see is when a brother wants to sleep with you or he wants to toast you all he's looking for is a nice lady figure eight let me tell you men are looking for more than figure eight they want a lady with two hands that can walk a mouth that can talk a brain that can think eyes that can that can that can look and make quality decisions hallelujah many ladies are not virtuous i'm sorry to say it but i'm telling you from the depths of my heart i watch some of us and i'm amazed we are so rude rude to everybody you say i'm like that okay continue you ask yourself and marry yourself out very very rude very hostile to everybody everywhere you go you just believe you are a prima donna you are a queen repent oh change and behave well some of us even have the gods and effrontery to believe that it's our destiny to marry men of god and look at how you are behaving you want to kill the man you think god hates his servants like that let me give you an assignment ladies go and find your mother or an elderly woman and carry package gift or a seed and go and drop it and sit down and say mommy teach me how to be a woman you don't you don't become a woman by wish you don't become a woman just by maturity and let this mother open up her pain and use it as a template to teach you virtue tonight some of us need to break some rubbish garbages we're having called relationships relationship that from day one you know it's not going anywhere the before you started the relationship the guy already wants to sleep with you and he's doing all kinds of things he is not qualified to be your husband don't pray about it let me tell you the answer no run quickly hallelujah some of us even travel to all kinds of places this is how people carry spirits from one person to the other hallelujah god is talking to you tonight because he loves you we must challenge ourselves ladies if you don't do anything about your life now you will not have any story to tell your children in the future when they say mommy tell me about your youthful days you you can only tell lies because it may be a, it may be a story the children will not want to hear hallelujah will you tell your children that in my youthful days i spent my time serving the lord i was a diligent woman with dignity and honor i made a vow with my life it's all right if you were living in the past before you got born again but you must change hallelujah ladies if you are listening to me say amen, amen. so you must wake up you must wake up let me tell you the truth there are some of us the reason why you are not married is not because demons are stopping you it's because god loves the person he wants to give you too much too much god is a god of extreme justice the brother cannot be tilling the vineyard walking and doing everything and the lady is there moving around and doing every kind of thing and later you ask an average lady the kind of guy she wants she was first laugh and say he must be tall dark and handsome his eyelashes must lap to the end i want somebody that when he smiles i can see his teeth i can do this i don't want anybody spitting on the mic anyhow when he's holding it you know all kinds of things the question is are you prepared for that kind of man are you prepared for that kind of man if you were god will you give yourself the kind of man you want if you were god Sila, God is speaking to you tonight. Therefore, please rise up, every lady. Aside from our mothers, please rise up. 
inside and outside please rise up this is a very honorable commitment if you don't believe in what we're saying don't worry you don't need to talk because some of you as you are making this commitment the devil is going to be telling you are you really serious about it it doesn't matter what your past has been this is why you came for koinonia it must change tonight say after me in the name of jesus i make a commitment tonight to be a responsible lady to be a responsible wife to be a responsible mother i lay aside childishness and i begin to pay the price to be a virtuous woman my husband will call me blessed my children will call me blessed in the name of jesus so look at me whatever price it would take for you to pay now if you need to go for a catering school go humble yourself if your friend can cook and you cannot cook one of the biggest kinds of deceit is self-deceit when you lie to yourself praise god one of the things we taught the students in personal transformation is how to acknowledge what you do not have and to learn how to receive it there are some things you have and there are some things you do not have you must take an inventory of what you do not have many of you choo, 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 this your talkative attitude let it die tonight in the name of jesus talking about everybody including your father and your mother no respect for elders you just speak there are some of you you talk rudely to your mothers and you insult them lambast them and open the door and go out and then you call your boyfriend and say how are you say somebody pissed me off you better change both the diction and the attitude change everything become very responsible in the name of the lord jesus please sit down this is how we transform our generation by making quality commitments hallelujah praise the lord are you blessed tonight am i challenging you yes some of us after this meeting we need to send a text to our parents and tell them daddy i'm sorry mommy i'm sorry the way i've treated you I've, i'm a changed person right now the word of god has worked in my life there's nothing embarrassing about it it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday there's nothing embarrassing there are many of us that need to apologize to people one of the greatest i think um aside from problem solving that i kept emphasizing for the students is the law of honor and i've taught it here the whole commandment is about honor honoring god and honoring men that spirit that makes us dishonor people whether because we think we are colleagues or whether we, because we think we are friends i command that spirit to live our lives forever many of us have missed out of prophetic opportunities because we cannot honor people you look at your mother and father every day you see people come and they are counseling them and you have never knelt down to say please lay your hands on me many of us have never packaged a gift i told the students yesterday when we finished our, our, our last class i told them to send although bishop is not around although jakes is not around i told them to send text to all of them and appreciate and celebrate them we call that honor honor is the seed for access whatever you dishonor lives your life could this be why quality friends have left our lives could this be why many of our parents do not even pay attention again i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me make this commitment i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me 
hallelujah make up your mind tonight that i will be different men may laugh at you but let me tell you you hold on in the future those same people will celebrate you are you getting what i'm saying they may laugh at you many young people if they see the mindset you have right now they will laugh at you you will look like a fool but you hold on the future will tell who is the fool hallelujah commit yourself commit yourself be responsible by the grace of god i have a spiritual responsibility over everyone in this house to make sure that i teach you the truth and i may not have done my best but god is my witness that i'm committed to making sure everybody receives the word hallelujah let me tell you something i'm a very busy person and you don't know what it takes to prepare a message you don't just lie down and cross your leg and receive inspiration are you getting my point you don't read a book or download an mp3 and listen no i preach an average of two to three messages every week aside from counseling I was sleeping almost all through today i didn't realize how tired i had been my body got to a point that i knew that even if i pray for quickening the holy spirit will not give me quickening again it's just he will tell me lie down and be quickened <laughs> listen this is the price for somebody's destiny to change i hope you value it because let me tell you what you are receiving free today you will pay for it tomorrow yes, mm, you will pay for it people send me text messages from all over they have to download these messages there are people every week coming in from mina coming in from kaduna kano abuja because they want to receive this word the bible says the kingdom of god is like a treasure a place where someone found a treasure and went sold everything he had and bought the whole property do you value the things you are receiving i've taught you on the holy spirit we have talked on character we have talked on finances we have talked on family relationship series all kinds of teachings purposely i know the millions of naira we would have made if we we're rolling our cities and, and and some of you work in other churches and other places and you know how much it is that you will make but everything is free because it's our commitment to pour everything to you that means that if you are not faithful the fault is yours there are people who never had the opportunity to hear what we are hearing but now that we are hearing it do something with it the bible says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it's not just to know them hallelujah so make a commitment koinonia make a commitment let childishness end tonight i told you this i don't believe in anything called adolescence or young adult an adult is anybody who is not a child once you are not a child you are an adult take responsibility hallelujah he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. one more time he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to the place of death one more time he leads me he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to the place of death so school of ministry students i congratulate you once again for some of you maybe after this night we may never see again hallelujah but i want you to hold on to these things that you have learned if you hold fast to this truth i assure you no power in existence will stop you 
from becoming what God has ordained for you. Hallelujah. At this point, I'm going to invite um, Prof to come. He's going to just encourage you, speak a fatherly advice for a few minutes, and then Pastor Tula will come, will speak, and then we'll pray for you. Is that all right? Please, let's welcome Prof. Praise the Lord. I said, My father has spoken. Oh, you needed to hear. Is that not true? Praise the Lord. You know, I've said it over and over that you are a lucky generation. True, I wish when I was in ABU, I had an opportunity like this. Maybe you don't see me in Zaria. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, for the graduates, seriously, when I came in and I was seated, I saw the radiant glory in you. And the Lord spoke in my spirit that it is from within that is radiating outside. So I know the Lord has deposited something inside of you to change this generation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, it's the desire of every man of God to bring out people that will be greater than him. And I know it's the desire of our mentor here to see you greater than him. But if you must be that, I'll tell you one fact, that you are stepping into a shoe that the size is extra large. And if you must occupy it, then you must move from comfort zone to the zone that, like Elijah, you must be fed by only angels. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is not by power. It is not by might. You see, you are the first people to leave this place. You see, what you will do will be the glory that will be attached to this school. You see, anytime you turn around the wall and you hear great school, they talk about Cambridge. You see, it was the people they released to the world that helped make the name. And you see, when you touch the wall, people will ask where the, the, the glory was bestowed upon you. And the place will be glorified. And I pray that wherever you are, you bring glory to God. And you also bring glory to this ministry. In the name of Jesus. You will do things that people would like to identify with this ministry. In the name of Jesus. I know the Lord will use you all over the world. He will use you to touch the world. And what you have had today, take it very well. You see, I have a gifted uh, uh, a chemist that made a statement. He said that you become what you are in life by 1% of your endowment and 99% perspiration. I don't know whether you understand what he's saying. Your ability will only give 1% to what you become. But the sweat you do is what that is going to make you great. I've seen, you know, scholars who come, you know, from the same class. You see, those that were on top when we were in the class, we end up learning from the people who were just average students. And the reason, they obey this law. You see, that most, for you to become great, you must forget about your potential. And do what? With God, work hard. And that's why every class I enter, I tell students that are three things in life, you must honor God, you must be disciplined, and you must work hard. When any is missing out of this, you will never make impact in life. I pray that the Lord will deposit these three things in you, in the name of Jesus. I would like to celebrate you one day. Any city I go and I see you are linked with Konani, I would like to be linked with you. May the Lord take you and establish you in Jesus' name. And we pray many of you to join them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Celebrate, Prof. Hallelujah. Now, um, Pastor Tula is going to come up. He will advise you, but when it's time to pray, he's going to lead us in the prayer. So he has two functions. Please celebrate him. Please celebrate him. You shouldn't be sitting. Come on now.
Hallelujah. Be seated. God bless you. I count myself very, very fortunate to see young men and women trained in ministry and are ready to exploit. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of the devil. He will never do you anything. Are you hearing me? Just a, like, like a dog without teeth. You cannot do anything. Now, there was a day I sat down and I looked at my life. I said, God, why didn't you reveal this thing to me when I was very small? Are you getting something? Now, why was I asking God this kind of question? Because uh, the understanding, what the Holy Spirit has helped me to learn in ministry, I say, God, how I wish my years could have been rewinded back at least. Let me be just 20 years. Let me start from there. And when the apostle was just analyzing the stages of life, I have discovered that I'm still in the right place. Hallelujah. Sometimes you wish you carry your life and put it in somebody's life so that the person will really know how you can express yourself. You may not understand, you may laugh over it, but life, as he said, is in stages. And once it comes and you are in tune with the Holy Spirit and say, God, here am I, you will never get your mind again. You will discover your zeal, your everything is driving towards pleasing God. Look, let me tell you, I have a lot of stories for my life, but I've discovered all these 54 years that I've lived, nothing pleases me as serving God. Nothing. I told my children, I said, look, the best life to live is to serve God. And if you have somebody who will sit you down and say, be careful with life, Thank God. We, we grew up in families that they don't know God. They are hidden. We struggle on our own. Anywhere we hear the sound of the gospel, we bounce into it. Whatever we get, whether garbage or anything, we swallow it. But God in his mercy filter all those things. And today we are what we are. By the mercy of God. For you to have been hearing this kind of sound teaching, sound warnings from the throne of grace, please Take it with all seriousness. And your life will never remain the same. I want to round up with this. I came to Zaria in 1979. So long, so At the age of 16 years. When I was coming, my father, who was a stark unbeliever and I've been praying for him to repent. After many years. I went to him and called him and said, Dad, what kind of a human being are you? Can't you repent? I was very bold to talk to him. He called me and said, my son, come here. He said, no human being on this planet that doesn't know that there is God. But everybody inherited something from his father. I said, what have you inherited from his father? He said, his father's traditional religion. From that day, I stopped praying for him. I know that he knows what he's doing. When, about, when I was about to leave the village, he called me and said, my son, come here. I have nothing to give you. But I will give you three words. And these words will guide your life. And you will become somebody tomorrow. Say number one. Anybody that seen you in life, respect that person. Number two. Don't be a drunkard. Because a drunkard never keeps anything for his life. Number three. Flee away from women. Because a woman can reduce you to nothing. And these are the words that keep on ringing in my life. And shaped my destiny. And I've discovered the best way to live is to click to Jesus. And by the grace of God. I will die for Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
I said in the name of Jesus. God will bless you. These things you are hearing will never go in vain. You will stand tall among your equals. In the name of Jesus. Look, it doesn't really matter what is happening to you. Tomorrow is better than today. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you. It is well with your destiny. It is well with your life. You will never die a sinner. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, very quickly, let me ask all the students, please come out. This is a very prophetic moment right now. Please, I want all of us to participate. Just begin to pray in tongues where you are, everybody inside and outside. This is a very, very prophetic moment right now. Please, everyone, just begin to pray in the spirit. Jedal banda kata prada da 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 bala da bala bo shambro du supaya. Something will come upon your life, and you will never be the same. Never be the same. Something will come upon your life, and you will never, never, ever be the same. Something will come upon your life. It will mantle you for excellence. Moses said, I desire that my spirit will fall even upon all of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Paul speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy said, Neglect not the gift of God that is in you, which came by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. That means something happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Tula is going to lead us. Pastor Williams, please come. Prof, sir, please can you come under this heavy corporate anointing. We are going to be praying for you and prophesying. The Bible says, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. The Spirit entered. Pastor, sir. Jerananananamasirananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananananan
ministries will come out of you in the name of Jesus you will never remain alone you will duplicate yourself into millions in the name of Jesus the hand of the Lord will be upon you for good in the mighty name of Jesus we are going to prophesy into your life that the God of heaven that has called you into ministry that has caused you to pass through this school of ministry it will bless you in the name of Jesus and whoever God bless stands blessed nobody will curse you in the name of Jesus we are going to prophesy into your life that henceforth you will be a blessing you will be a blessing you will be a blessing and to everybody around you will be a blessing even the unbelievers will be a blessing in the name of Jesus let's begin to prophesy into their lives let's begin to prophesy into your life let's begin to prophesy into their lives Rababa, Rababa, Rabo, Sekana, Lekane, Brane, Baswa, Tarababa, Kabo, Sekeneba, Lebrana, Baba, Swa, Bale, Bane, Kanda, Rababa, Swa, Baba, Yeka, Lebrana, Baba, Swa, Tarababa, Ekane, Brane, Baba, Swa, Bale, Kanda, Lea, Lebrana, Baba, Swa, Baba, Yeka, Talabara, Rabrana, Baba, Swa, Baye, Kereba, Lebrana, Baba, Lebrana, Baba, Swa, Bale, Brane, Kanda, Rababa, Kuba, Baba, Ya, Lebrana, Baba, Swa, Baba, Lebrana, Kanda, Rababa, Ya. Kamali prani babo swata raba baka proba le prana babo e kamali prani babo swa e kani prani babo swata raka bolia ba kamali prani babo swa bari bodi prani kani prani babo swa raba na prani baba kani prani baba swa bale pra le prani baba swata raba baka prani baba ba le bani prani baba swata raba e kana raba swa baba di prani babo swa baba le kani prani baba swata raba baku ro babo swa ba. Yeah, yeah, ma, 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 ma. Declare to yourself that you are a blessed person. Yera kata raba ba swa ba ba le promosia. Le baba na proni ba ba swa ba ya ne kamroni ba ba swa. Le proni ba ba swa ba raba ba kamroni ba ba swa. Re kanda raba ba ba swa ba ni proni ba ba swa kala ba ba. Baba yera kanda raba ba ba swa. Yera baba yera raba ba ba swa. Yeah, ba 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 ba, enter the bubble, say, get it, ba ba. The bloody ba 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 ba, center the bubble, yeah, get it, ba ba. Ba 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 ba, enter the bubble, say, get it, bloody bubble. Bloody bubble, bloody bubble, center the bubble, ba ba. Yeah, get it, bubble, center the bubble, yeah, center the bubble, ba ba ba. Oh, glory. 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 Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to prophesy into your life. In the book of the Gospel of according to St. John, chapter 16, verse 14. In the book of the Gospel of according to St. John, chapter number 15, verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus declares there that you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have ordained you to go and bear fruit. And fruit that will last. You will never cast your young. You will never abort your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the corporate anointing. In this place I declare to you. That you will never be a fallout. In the name of Jesus. God is saying. God is saying, grab as much as you can. Because the power that is coming upon you, your physical body cannot be able to contain it. Your physical body cannot be able to contain it. Every limitation is breaking out now. Every limitation is breaking out now. You are mounting up with the wings like the eagle. You are mounting up into the prophetic ministry. You are mounting up into a destiny. Raka dada raba baya, leke ni prane baswa baya, baba ya dada babo ke bonya rabo saniga, leke dada baba swa baba leke prane babo sia, leke dada baba swa baba leke prane babo se baba, ya mana kata raba babo se baba ya ke bonya, le prane baba kata raba baba, baba 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 Come in, come in, come in, come 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hear this one. Hear this one. Hear this one. Don't say the father. Before you were born, I know what you will become. I have ordained you. I'm sending you to nations. You will break them with an iron rod. And the Bible says, don't look at their faces. Don't fear their faces. Don't fear their faces. Their faces may be horrible. But you are standing in the office of the Almighty God. Declaring the heavens on heart. Heaven will back you up. I said heaven will back you up. Heaven will back you up. In the name of Jesus. Heaven will confirm every utterance from your mouth. In the name of Jesus. No demon will stand before you. You will not only command them, you will speak to them and they will obey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you have been under authority. God is releasing authority upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to declare it now. Begin to declare it now. Begin to declare it now. Receive the power. Receive the authority. Receive the glory. Re ma 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 ma. Re ba 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 sia. Re ba 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 sia kama. Re kana re ya ba di ba ba di pro di kabro ba ma sia. Ah. Yeah. Eh ma 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 ma. Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. Hallelujah. My goodness. The thing that God is doing in this place is mighty. You will never be the same. Never ever be the same. Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you something. This is what happens to a man that turns that man to become another thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our daddy has spoken. And I knew that he was speaking from the depths of his heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please hold your hands together. I want you to receive something now. Hold your hands and lift it up. I never called myself into the apostolic ministry. I've said it again and again. An apostle is not a pastor. It's not... It's not is not a teacher the apostolic office is a governmental office hallelujah you have been taught this and you know and i want to pray for you hallelujah please hold your hands and lift it up hold your hands i want to prophesy from the depths of my heart my prayer had been that something will leave me and enter you hallelujah and it will enter you please lift your hands father i stand in this office that you have given by grace and i pray upon these ones you told me that there will be a transference of spirit 
right now under this apostolic office take it now 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 governmental authority take it now take it now take it now take it now the power to heal the sick take it now every door that opens for us let it open for you from today the ability to speak and change situations take it now take it now wisdom receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom receive an impartation of the spirit of leadership receive an impartation of the spirit of courage receive an impartation of the unction to prosper let the mantle of prosperity come upon you grace for intimacy i open up your spiritual ears hear the voice of the spirit hear the sounds of heaven everything you lay your hands to do i command it to prosper prosper in business prosper in ministry prosper in your job i forbid you from begging i forbid you from begging whoever you pray for will be healed whoever you deliver will be delivered whoever you prophesy over the heavens will honor you go and teach with power i command the spirit of revelation to come upon you let your eyes be open to access the mysteries of the world a comprehension of the workings of the principles of the kingdom receive it all the mantles that god has put upon this house receive it the mantle of the presence of god take it now the mantle of wisdom take it now the mantle of prosperity take it the mantle of uncommon favor take it right now everywhere you go may the presence of god follow you everywhere you go may you be a light tonight we call you ambassadors representatives of the government of heaven for those of you who in the future will pioneer churches we prophesy that they will grow you will never struggle in ministry in the name of the lord jesus all kinds of ministries we prophesy may they prosper let your hands be anointed from today you will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed the same results you see in this house may it begin to walk in your life in the name of jesus every limitation that followed you from the past as our father has spoken we shatter it right now every covenant every power every limiting force from your background from your village from your father's house that wants to stop you in the name of jesus i set it on fire every power that does not want you to get married that said you will not break ground tonight we come as carpenters and we judge that horn we judge that horn we judge that horn you will do business and prosper you will do ministry and prosper Let our King be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna. Let His praise be lifted up. call you blessed in the name of Jesus blessed beyond any curse in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit tonight 
in the presence of heaven we graduate you as successful students of eni school of ministry in the name of jesus we graduate you with an unction for possibilities we graduate you with wisdom we graduate you with the power of the holy ghost become ambassadors of the kingdom become ambassadors of this ministry become ambassadors of your families in the name of jesus christ hallelujah god bless you please rise up celebrate one another is finally done congratulations hug one another god has done it you have come to the end please celebrate yourselves is a journey what you please help them help them just direct them celebrate yourself celebrate them they have done a great work that I think that I impartation we thank you for wisdom they will never be the same there are no more students they have become colleagues in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please be seated everyone let's let's hurry up so we can finish up there's still one or two things hallelujah Let me call Shade for a function. Please celebrate her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On behalf of the leadership of the house, I want to congratulate you, um, graduates of ENI School of Ministry, congratulations again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like Daddy rightly said, you all did very well. Everyone did very, very well. But then amongst us, there were three people, I would say, that um, did extremely well. Um, we're all good. Praise the Lord. Okay? And um, I would like to call... I'll, I'll begin from our third, uh, sorry, our second runner-up for the year 2014. Please, I'd like you to clap like you've never done before. As in, this one is not just chemistry, this one is Bible. You know, most of us just feel we know the word. But then when we're asked to do some things, that's when you know that, okay, there are some things that don't just come by. Praise the Lord, like Daddy said, like by inspiration. Praise the Lord. Okay, for my, I have my, um, my second runner up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Calm down, all is well. Amen. I have my second, uh, sorry, my second runner up and to present, to present the gifts to the second runner up, that's the third position, is I actually have the honor to do this. Please celebrate God for me as I welcome my beloved husband to do this. Thank you very much. 
Ladies, if you are not jealous, celebrate God. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's my fine Bobo. Praise the Lord. Okay, we have um, our third, our second runner up. Um, we have Bello Andrew Meridian. Praise the Lord. Congratulations, sir. And more grace for you as you climb up the ladder of ministry. Praise the Lord. Okay, we have our first runner up for the year. This celebrates God before I call her small. Abba. Ladies, we are doing something now. Abba. Hallelujah. Jesus joy. Okay, sorry, I would like to welcome um, um, Pastor. Sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry, sir. Daddy, please, I would like to welcome you. Is it Prof? Sir? Is it Prof? You're welcome, sir. Please, I'm sorry. Please celebrate God's servant again. All right. And the student to be presented this beautiful gift to is no one else but Adam's Matilda Blessing. Please celebrate for Lady Papa! Celebrate God! This is, this is beauty plus brain. Beauty plus brain. Hallelujah! Everybody should take a real pause here as we <clears throat> and um, to present the gifts to this person. I'll call our daddy, Professor Mary, upstage. Daddy, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Women were doing something. <laughs> We have Ares and Rachinello. all in jesus name now this is a challenge i guess um we should be provoked by this um subsequent um students that come for the school of ministry please let's always know that there is a price for being the best amen remember daddy always talks about competence there is a price for competence amen the lord bless us all in jesus name amen. Hallelujah. Brothers, don't mind them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please listen up. We are going to go into a very important session right now. The presentation of the certificates. And I want, to, I want us to quickly celebrate Pastor Williams, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to be very smart in the moment um, when we call you. Just come out very, very, very quickly. Very quickly, shake Pastor Williams. Are we going to snap? Huh? Oh, yeah, we'll go photograph and position yourself quickly. Please, when we call you out, no laziness, no sluggishness. Come out quickly, shake him, snap, and go back. 
a baller in Marion, a boss a day. Quickly, quickly, please. Abo, Isaac, Abo. Congratulations. When you come, just turn around and look at him. Tabat Abraham Felix. Abubakar Grace Christos. Adams Matilda Blessing. Adeboye Benjamin. Aluole. Am I right? Ah, okay. Adage of faith. Adage of faith. Ade can they precious show? Adoe Clement. Adoe. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Felix Dora Afolabi. A Folabi or Lyinka Samuel. Agada S. Agada. Ahmed Ola Abiola. A Jose Gloria Oiza. Gloria. Ako Roslyn. Sharon. Obe Danjuma A. Abel Alisa. The other name, I don't know how to pronounce it. Ares Sandra. Asele Agum Abel. This is my butcher, your name, forgive me. Ata Obadaya Johanna. Awe Abiodun Ebenezer. Oshas, Oshas. Ayeba Sylvester Atai. Bako Suzy Sabo. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. If you're under the anointing, just try, please, and come and collect. Chinemi John. Bello Edrel Nuruddin. Elijah Kende. Must you know them to clap? Clap. Emmanuel Taiwo. Yerima Yusuf David Ehoche Joshua Obiabo If people should smile on this picture, don't disgrace us, smile Isaac Olua Olua what now? Equal Greg Ilya Lange Haruna Ishiaka Abel O James Joseph Make sure you don't collect another person's certificate please Janet Kande Janet Kande Is she here? Okay John Julius A Is it? Okay. Help me Michael Your initials are K.I. Who are you first? Eh? Is it Kumeko or Kume for something? 
Ah, prayer ban, no way. No way, prayer ban. Ojoro. Lawa, Taiwo, Ajibola. John, Maria. Is it Maria? Marion? No, Maria. Okay, Maria, yes. Correct. Teresa Chinere. Musa John Daniel. Alice Nankusong. Wachuku Kenneth. I. Obona Deborah Chinasa. Ogeni Alice. Who is that? Oh, I hope I'm calling the right name. Oh, not around. Okay. Okalo Priska Chidima. Victor Kende. Olisa Jesline Emanuela. Please hurry up. Omale Shedrak Ako. Ondoma Patience. Adetola Tolu Oulabi. Prayer ban, prayer ban, prayer ban. Raphael, a hiabi or something. Clement, Aleo Josera. Tijani, Faith. Joseph Elijah A. Uja Lawrence. Lawrence. Simeon Youngs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. For those of you who clap for only those you know, after all the preaching we have been preaching, may God forgive you. You will come and do it too, and when is your turn? I hope you are in a department where they know you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me use this opportunity to really celebrate our father, Prof. Please appreciate him. Thank you, sir. We will never take you for granted. Hallelujah. Please help me with a standing ovation. Appreciate Pastor Tula. We love you. We honor you, sir. We honor you. We honor you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate Pastor Williams. Hallelujah. Shade is not your fault. Help me appreciate Mr. Ojele, a place, Shadi's husband. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to round up right away. Um, next week is miracle service for the month of March. An opportunity to prove to the devil and principalities and powers that God is still alive. Hallelujah. Please invite your friends, invite everyone. The venue will be CGC here. Hallelujah. Let me have the announcements, please. If this is your first time worshiping with us inside and outside, if this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia, please, I want you to jump up on your feet and just run out here. We love you. We honor you inside and outside, no matter how far. Please celebrate them, Koinonia. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first to come here. Thank you. We have a prayer and we have a prophecy. Thank you, mommy. Thank you for coming. Koinonia, celebrate them till they come. Please motivate them. Hallelujah. Hold on, please. 
immediately after i pray for these people please protocol come and take this off we're going to snap with all the students we'll do it right here i don't know how you can push this speaker away please so that we'll have a very beautiful picture with all of them hallelujah praise the lord after the grace they can do all their snapshots thank you so much for coming celebrate them again koinonia thank you thank you for coming today was our graduation for our students we thank you this is koinonia we honor you we appreciate your coming hallelujah you will never be the same again we want to pray for you and stretch our hands to you i want you to know that we are anointed when we bless you you are blessed saints of god stretch your hands and just prophesy thank you father for their lives they are blessed in the name of jesus they are moving from glory to glory from grace to grace whatever challenge you came here with in the name of jesus we command that it leaves your life forever you are blessed we bless you with, with a hunger for spiritual things we bless you with breakthrough in every area of your life in the name of jesus christ thank you once again we celebrate you for coming please we just like you to kindly follow the ushers the lady waving her hands who we'll have your information and you'll be back dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.